ability to raise his game is, is very unique. You know, I've been around some really good, great defensemen. Uh, he, he's right up there with them, and, and he does get over them. NHL Morning Skate with Scott Lachlan and Gord Stiller. Weekdays, 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. NHL Morning Skate. The general manager of the Vegas Golden Knights, Kelly McCrimmon. Vegas so quickly has become a place where players want to go. Players appreciate that we're trying to win, and uh, I think we've come to expect it. It's their livelihood and all of those things that go with it. So we try to do uh, what we can to, to help that happen. NHL Morning Skate with Scott Lachlan and Gord Stone. Weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. There is no competition in soccer quite like the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XMFC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jim Bellingham's driving, driving scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage and all the top matches are on Sirius XMFC 157 and the all-new Sirius XM app. Join me, Gord Stellick, and Scott Lachlan as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, drivers and passengers, time now for the Leafs game night edition of Yes Guy, No Guy, live from Scotiabank Arena. Just a minute, let me do that seatbelt up for you. There you go. Okay, good. And you got the tray all looked after. Good. Okay, Josh Cloak. Are you ready for this? Very much ready. It was my idea. So, yes, I'm very ready. No, 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 no. Yeah, yes, yeah, guy, yeah, no yeah. guy is my idea. No, you might have created it, yeah. but it was my idea to do it tonight. Well, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't waste my time patting myself on the back for that. But nonetheless, <laughs> yes, guy, no guy, number one. Leafs depth is at an all-time high. Uh, I, I guess in this kind of modern era, if we're looking at, uh, yeah. you know, the, the, the Austin Matthews era, um, I would say yes, guy. I, I, I think if you just look at Morgan Riley coming back tonight, and the fact that you, 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 your, your blue line still looks very, very good, and you know that you've still got Joel Edmondson, and you've still got uh, Timothy Lilligren to come back. And, and if we're talking about Simone Benoit being out, possibly out of the playoff six, yes, I think you, you, you're you talking about really good depth. If you're talking about Nick Robertson, who looks like he could come out of the playoff lineup, we're going to discuss that in more detail. Yeah. And if you're looking at goals per 60, he's, I think, the third best scorer on the Leafs. Then, and, and he could be out of the lineup for sure. For sure this is some of the best depth they've, they've ever had. I'm willing to say, in a worst-case scenario, which, we, which, which would be to lose game one of the first round, think of the options that could come into that lineup in game two. They've never really had that kind of a look before. Now it depends on how they, they test that depth, and that's going to yeah. lead into yes. yes guy, no guy, question number one for me. Nick Robertson is in the Tapman's Game 1 playoff lineup. No guy. Tell me why, guy. Uh, I think there's a defensive liability there. I think he's uh, what he brings to the table is offense, and when you need that in a series, if you're painted into a corner, he's your guy. You know when Nick Robertson has been at his best this season? Immediately when he comes back into the lineup after being out. Game two. A little thing we like to call game two. Oh, I've heard of game two. Yeah. Boy, you're just the originator of all this great stuff. Uh, well, stick around, kid. Uh, uh, game two seems a bit soon to me, but I, I, I'm inclined to agree with you. Yeah. I just think that the trust level isn't there yet. And and yeah. Sheldon Keefe has been alluding to this all week. He's been asked about this, this kind of young line all week, and everything he said suggests maybe not this year but organizationally they really really value these players Absolutely. moving forward now's not the time but that doesn't mean the time isn't coming i mean this this is still a team let's not forget though it looks like they're going to play florida in the first round how many goals per game did they get against florida last year yeah not much dos yeah that's trouble yeah it is so this is when you could need a player like nick robertson yes guy no guy number two from this side of the broadcast booth Max Domi will still be top six when everybody's healthy. I think yes, Guy. I don't know how the lines are going to shake out when Mitch Marner comes back. Saturday's going to be fascinating. Um, and then you still have Callie Yarncroft to add to the mix as well. But I just think what Max Domi has shown is that he's he thrives in big games. Yeah. And he doesn't cower when the spotlight gets really bright. Um, you need players like that. You, 
defensively, he, he doesn't really feel like a third line type of player. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I, I just think it's going to be imperative for Sheldon Keefe to really balance out the scoring. Um, I don't I, I don't know what it's going to look like yet. I really don't. But I think Max Domi has shown that his playmaking, his skating, and his comfort level with really good players suggests that he has to be a top six player. Okay. Uh, yes guy, no guy from me. Number two. The Leafs should heavily rest Austin Matthews ahead of the playoffs despite his pursuit for 70 goals. Uh, I'm going to say no guy. I'm not a big rest guy unless there's a, a lingering problem we're not aware of. I don't believe in turning the tap off just because then you got to turn it back on. So as long as he's uh, in perfect health, I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste my time with that. So no guy for me. I, a lot of it is going to depend on what the player wants, to be honest, right? If the player sure. kind of says, I'm, I'm feeling it, yeah. I'm feeling a bit banged up. Uh, I think this season more than ever, Austin Matthews understands that he's going to have to carry this team, right? And, and I think that's just the conversation that's going to have to happen between him and Sheldon Keefe. Um, Sheldon Keefe said this morning, and if you look at it in a vacuum, it's quite a telling quote. Sheldon Keefe said, I don't care about 70 goals, right? And and that's fine. Right. He cares about winning in the playoffs. I get that. Sure. It wouldn't surprise me to see Austin Matthews maybe take those last two games off in Florida off. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I get a bad vibe with people, uh, unless it's necessary, rest, I think the... Uh, uh, load management stuff bothers me a bit. Uh, yes guy, no guy, uh, sort of a knockoff of my Domi question. Bertuzzi, top six when everybody's healthy. Uh, yes guy. Again, I don't know where, how it's going to shake I out. I, I, uh, there, there's people a lot smarter than me that get paid a lot more than me. Their job is to figure it out. But I just think Tyler Bertuzzi, like Max Domi, has grown. And he's, he's shown that during playoff type games, he plays really, really well. He can bring that 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 kind of jam in playoff games. I, I don't know what that looks like. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to get this Bertuzzi Matthews Marner line that I think people talked about in in training camp, for example. Yeah, but I, I I think he has to be in the top six just because of of how hot he's been lately, um, how he scores playoff type goals. Right, uh, y- y- your fourth line is is a is a nothing line. I think the big question then is is how the third line is going to shake out because we're, we're you know Bertuzzi and Domi look like top six players, I, I, but I I don't know where are you at. Um, definitely top six, uh, and again don't know the configurations, but uh, it's too valuable too valuable to be wasted in sort of a checking or or energy role. I mean, it's so something that could drive the team forward. Um, let's hear from Coach Keith on how Matthews' goal scoring has impacted the team. Yeah, I think there's some uh, excitement there uh, for Austin. It's the type of year that he's had, but I, I don't, I don't think it's uh, overdone or anything like that. I don't get the f- the feeling of that. I mean, you can see guys looking for him on the ice, but it's generally it's not a bad idea to look for him. Um, you know, so there, you know, you, you gotta you gotta recognize that's gonna be part of the deal. Um, but you don't wanna you don't wanna obviously change your game or, or, or change the focus, you know, and that's not the focus for me. And I've talked to Austin, it's not the focus for him. You know, he, he wants to finish the season strong. He wants to be feeling good. He wants to be, um, you know, wants, wants to have energy, you know, through this last stretch and going into the playoffs. And, and, and that's, I guess, really the goal for our team, you know, is to have our game in order and, and be as healthy and rested as possible as we finish this last push. Is there a fine line between him wanting to get to 70 goals and maybe everybody wanting him to get to 70 goals and maybe getting him the rest he might need for for being ready for playoffs yeah there is for sure I mean, we'll, we'll walk that of either i'm not concerned about 70 goals at, at all you know I, I'm, I'm i'm concerned about having having him and our team and uh yeah you know, ready to go for for playoffs and and you know he's like we saw the other night he's you know, he gets Two last game, and, and those are two two important goals for us in the game. You know he's going to contribute that way, and that's what he's done all season for us. He's an important part of our team. But that's that's not our fo- not our focus, not my focus at all. You see it in the NFL more often than any other league, but players get rested down the stretch to make sure they're available for the playoffs. Is that something you think? Well, I think if you just look at how we've handled it the last couple of years, you know. Um, We'll talk about that. This is a little bit different here right now. Like we've got, 
we've, we've, we haven't been able to play with our group uh, very much here with the injuries that we've had, five players being out and you know, they're going to start to trickle back into our lineup. And I think having our group in order is, is uh, important. And the more reps we can get with our power play intact uh, is going to be a priority for us too. So we'll manage all of that. But Austin's minutes have been, I think, in a really good place. Um, and that's important for me. I'm, I'm monitoring that. So it's, it's a balance of rest, but also staying sharp. Um, you know, and, uh, and keeping guys in, in game mode, you know, that, that's, you know, that's really important too, because as you know, playoffs are hard and difficult and emotions are high and all of that. And you don't want to, you know, don't want to slip too far the other way with having to climb your way back out of that. Coach Keith getting set for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Let's return now to yes guy, no guy. Yes guy, no guy. Sammy starts in game one of the playoffs. I thought we talked about this guy. I thought we went through this. He's the guy. For me, yes guy, Elias Samsonov. Wow, I didn't like now- that question. No, I... <laughs> <laughs> For someone that invented this game, I thought yeah. you'd, you'd be... You, you're oh, the, oh. You're the one that's, that doesn't like rest. You're talking about being fresh all the time. I thought there'd be some new questions I, I just, here. I, I, sometimes you ask a question to elicit an attitude or response from the person you're working and with. And you got the former. You got the attitude. Yeah. Look, I, <laughs> yes, I, I did. I I think, I'm going to give it back to you at some point. I think Ilya Samsonov has shown how... Not just how technically strong of a goal he is, but how mentally strong he is this season compared to last season. Even last season in the playoffs, you were always kind of wondering, well, like let's, yeah. you know, he's uh, on a one-year deal. Like we know, you're kind conditioned of this- to think that way though because of the past, right? But this season, his turnaround is remarkable. He deserves so much credit from essentially coming back from the dead, right? This is a player that oh, yeah. this is a player that cleared you waivers. Know, many people myself included wondered if he'd play an nhl game again and then to not just come back but to play as well as he has um he deserves the chance to start in game one and and i I also don't think joseph wall has played enough as of late to 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 be in the playoffs he's the goalie of the future undoubtedly but for me right now yes guy Elias samsonov game one starter see now if you had asked me that question how would you have taken it man do you think my answer would be i don't care Okay, then tell me the, why, guys. It's the first time I would have said that about the Leafs going into the playoffs because whoever starts has a good backup on the bench who can step in and another guy in the press box who can also step in. We've never said that about the Leafs. If you if you ask me who the Game 7 starter is, I would have, might have a different answer for you. And what I mean by that is I think there's a very good Uh-oh. possibility, a strong, <laughs> a strong possibility. Well, we're going 7. <laughs> you, you, oh, that's, really? <laughs> I think there's a very good possibility, a strong possibility, that we see both goaltenders not just playing, but starting. Okay, here's my theory. I'm just going to say it. I'll repeat it over the next week and a half. This team has a lot of things going for it that past Maple Leaf teams did not. Um, I, I, I'm really positive that they're going to do something. I don't know how they're going to do it. They're going to do something, and it's going to take everybody. If they do the shortened bench thing, which yep. they've done in the past, yep. disaster. Rely on everybody. Yeah, and I, and I think that's something that Sheldon Keefe has come to understand yes. uh, from past playoff runs. And I think if we bring it back to goaltending, I think you know that you have a goaltender who, if if one falters, um, there's another one who's sharp. And I don't think you can you you, you would have said that in the past. No. Um, December Joseph Wall was one of the best goaltenders we've seen in recent memory here. That's a good goaltender to have in your back pocket. Well, let's set up the opening faceoff for you next. This is Leafs Game Night on TSN 1050, the iHeart Radio app, and the Leafs Radio Network. Do you love deli meat but are careful about your sodium intake? Try new Schneider's Deli Meat with the delicious taste you've come to expect from Schneider's. Now with 25% less sodium than regular deli meats. They're crafted in Canada using only Schneider's premium cuts of meat, and they're an excellent source of protein. Try all five new deli meats, including smoked black forest ham and herb turkey from Schneider's, trusted by Canadians for over 130 years. Brand power helping you buy better. Breaking story from Alpine News Network. Sandra and Kabir are celebrating 50 years of marriage by turning their boring bedroom into a spicy one. Oh, my. Alpine Credit sent a super strength hero to help with a home renovation load. New floors, windows, a heart-shaped button that plays this tune. Okay, I think that's quite enough. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Just for license 12616. 
Hello, people of the GTA. Patio season is around the corner, but why wait for packed parks and King Street when you can head to Canada's favorite paradise, Cuba, for less? Book early with Sunwing and kick back in Holguin or Cayo Santa Maria, where the mojitos are always fresh. When you save more, you can do more. Book with your local travel agent or at this spring, transform your ride with the 2024 Toyota Camry SE Upgrade from Maple Toyota. With its athletic styling, great power and fuel efficiency, Toyota Safety Sense, and high levels of innovative technology, you'll be sure to enjoy wherever the road takes you this spring in this fun size ride. The 2024 Toyota Camry SE Upgrade is in stock and available now for immediate delivery at Maple Toyota. Make it easy. Make it maple. Visit mapletoyota.com. Part of the Zankin Auto Group. Another game, another test. Tonight, the Tampa Bay Lightning in town. 8-1-1, their last 10. Plenty of playoff history between these two. Morgan Riley is back, and Wool gets the start. And, of course, we will have to ask, will Austin Matthews add to his franchise record goal scoring? Well, let's find out. Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey starts now. It's time for Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey. On TSN 1050 and the Leafs Radio Network, the Leafs live here. Welcome to Bolson Canadian Leafs Hockey Live from Scotiabank Arena. Jim Taddy, Josh Cloak from The Athletic with you right now. Joe Bone and Jimmy Rouse standing by getting their accounts and descriptions in order to describe the Tampa Bay Lightning visit to Toronto against the Maple Leafs. The starting lineup is brought to you by Molson. Whether it's Canadian, Ultra, Export, or Excel, there's a Molson with your name on it. And here's what we have for the Leafs tonight. Matthew centering Domi and Bertuzzi. Tavares between Nylander and McMahon. Holmberg between Robertson and Nyes. Cam centering Reeves and Dewar. Same as the last game. Riley Labushkin on the blue line. Benoit McCabe and Brody Timmons. And, of course, Wall starts in goal. Let's go to the defense. What do you make of that alignment? Yeah, I think Riley Labushkin is um, the pairing you're going to see a lot in the playoffs, and I, I don't think it's any surprise that in his return, Sheldon Keefe wants Morgan Riley playing with Ilya Labushkin. Uh, the Benoit McCabe pairing, I think, is one that has done really well all season, uh, and it feels like it's one that, that probably won't make it into the postseason. Uh, we'll see. But I, look, I I think this is another opportunity for you know for Connor Timmins to to get some good power play action as well, in you know preparation for coming in in a depth role. But look, it, it's this is we're getting closer to the top six we're going to see in the playoffs, and that's what Sheldon Keefe wants. I, and really, you know, you want to develop Timmins as the right-handed shot. We don't know when Lilligren comes back, but always nice to have an option that way. Yeah, I, I still have a lot of questions about him defensively, and I, I I'm not the only one. But, you know, you do love how he can kind of skate through traffic and, and move the puck through traffic um, against a, a really hard forechecking team like the Florida Panthers. You wonder if that's something that, that Sheldon Keefe is going to rely on a little bit more. We'll see. A lot of talk about uh, Nick Robertson, and uh, obviously the coach uh, wasn't very, uh, uh, I guess, positive going into the last game, talking about defensive uh, liabilities with that whole line with Holmberg and Nyes, and did test them against the Panthers, and they did come up, uh, I guess, on the short end of it in the third period, but that's part of a process. Uh, Robertson is definitely scoring. Here's Coach Keith on Robertson's impact. Uh, I think he's just continued what he's done for us most of the season, you know, is... He's given us everything he has in every shift. He's working very hard. He's he's competing. Uh, he's scoring when he gets his opportunities. I think he's recognizing the opportunities are harder to come by, but when he's gotten them, he's he's made made good on them. You know, I think you just look at the last two goals that he scored. It's you know he's he's scored goals that uh, uh, really it's a you know kind of his only scoring chance of the of the game, and and they go in, and that's what he that's the ability that he has. Um, so that's that's great to see, and it's a great contributor to our team. Uh, but there's, I would guess, you know, there's there's a lot more that goes into it, right? Shift to shift, play to play. You got to be good. You got to be able to carry play. Uh, you got to be able to be relied upon, uh, and you got to be, be able to find your way through um, through the rest of the depth chart. You know, there's a lot of guys on our team, and you know we'll make decisions as we go we'll see where our lineup's at we'll see where our health is at the good news is that uh nick and i guess i would put in all our young players into that you know category you know we've uh mcmahon's not as young but 
a certain inexperience. And you now we, you know, we're you look at it, our teams, you know, has has hopes to compete for the Stanley Cup. We've got four first year forwards uh, that have played on our lineup quite a bit this year. I don't think many teams would have that being the case. And these guys have grown a lot within our team, and that's been the real positive as they've taken steps. Nick has taken a significant step this season. Uh, the first one is that he stayed healthy. Uh, that's a significant step, right? He's he's gotten. I'm not sure exactly where he's at, but it feels like he's gotten more experience out of just this season than he has in any other season he's played uh, in pro hockey. So that in itself is a big development for him. He's finding ways to produce. He's learning the league. He's uh, you know he's moved around our lineup. He's played up. He's played down. He's been out of the lineup and come back in. He's he's learned and dealt with a lot. He's taken a big step, and that's really important, you know. And, and he certainly becomes a good option for us in this playoffs, but. Perhaps more importantly, he becomes a guy that's going to grow within, within our team uh, in, the big, 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 in the big picture. Coach Keefe on Nick Robertson. I think it's absolutely brilliant that in a game where you haven't clinched the playoff spot, have a nice lead over the Florida Panthers on home ice, you would put out Holmberg, Robertson, and Nyes to test them defensively in an in-game live situation at this point of the season. It's what you need. It suggests to me that... that you know, Sheldon Keefe has some confidence in them in the future. But if you're reading between the lines, I don't think we should expect this line to stick. And I think Nick Robertson and possibly Pontus Holmberg are on that kind of playoff bubble. Um, but, yeah, those are the tests that you want. Um, those are the tests that, that he wants those players to 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 go through eventually as well. Yeah. Um, but... It just it, it feels like a little bit too much for them in the playoffs right now. Well, and when you consider that Gregor, Marner, and Yarncroke are not in the lineup, and they hope to be at some point, there's another line right there. Uh, not that they would play those good three guys together, but... No, for sure. And I, I think we're ultimately looking at, you know, two spots or two players coming out, right? I, I, I really think that's where we're at. And, and look, like the fourth line could be messed with a little bit, Right, I think a player like a Connor Dewar could come in and out. Even Ryan Reeves, yep. uh, who's played his best hockey as of oh, late, absolutely. he could come in and out. I think he's in for game one because of the, the, the physicality and the tone setting that he's going to bring. <laughs> I was just watching him come out. Obviously, Wall leads the team out, but Reeves sped by him as, as he stepped on the ice and just jacked right around the ice. He's all revved up and ready to go. Ryan Reeves is at his most confident oh. as a Maple Leaf right yeah. now. And that's a really, really good sign because Florida can be a nasty team. We've seen it, right? But game one, I, I, I'm of the belief that you do need his presence in the lineup just to, to, to settle things down, uh, not necessarily to drop the gloves. We're not talking about that, but I, it, it's a tone-setting thing. That's so much of what the first game of the series is, and that's why I think he will ultimately be in game one. I got to say, one of the treats of being here is, is you can watch him away from the puck i mean he gets on his horse and you better not be in his way for sure but again that that fourth line has to be responsible defensively as well really really responsible um that's and against a team that's gonna again they're they're gonna forecheck the heck out of you the panthers they're they're, they're probably the best forechecking team in the league you're gonna need a sturdy fourth line so it's not just on ryan reeves to play physical to play smart as well Tampa Bay power play runs at 29.3%. Their penalty kill, 82.9. Really good special teams. We'll see what all that means coming up next. The opening face-off waiting for you with Joe Bowen and Jimmy Ralph. This is Bowles and Canadian Leafs Hockey on TSN 1050, the iHeart Radio app, and the Leafs Radio Network. Hear the Masters exclusively on Sirius XM. Hi, this is Mike Tirico, and there's nothing like the Masters. Rory McIlroy, he's thinking Grand Slam. The beauty of the Azaleas, the passion of the Patriots, and the best golfers in the world vying for a green jacket. They turn right into the cup for John Rahm. It all makes for one of the most iconic weekends in sports. Join me for live coverage of the Masters beginning Thursday, April 11th on Masters Radio Channel 92 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The points with Boomer Gordon. Andrew Burnett is your Jack Adams winner. Oh. 70 points in 52 games. You project that over 82, Jake. That's an 111 point pace. So they've gone head to head with the big boys of the West all year. Andrew Burnett inherited a new GM in Barry Trotz and a sinking payroll. And he's got this team playing as well as any team in the NHL. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. 
Hockey 24-7 on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. This is the NHL. These are pros. You don't want guys to put good power play units on, don't take penalties. You don't want good power play units to score goals when you've given up a whole bunch, kill them. You don't like it, do something about it. If you want to reward your guys who had a good game with a chance to get some more goals and points, do it. If I was a coach, I wouldn't care. Who cares? Worry about your own team, don't worry about mine. Sirius XM, NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91. And on your schedule with the Sirius XM app. NHL Morning Skate. Andrew Burnett, head coach of the National Predators. I think Roman Yossi gets underrated nowadays. I think maybe the consistency that he does it every year, um, you take it for granted a little bit. I mean, he's done everything in this game. His ability to raise his game is, is very unique. You know, I've been around some really good, great defensemen. Uh, he, he's right up there with them, and, and he does get over them. NHL Morning Skate with Scott Lachlan and Gord Stellar. Weekdays, 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. NHL Morning Skate. The general manager of the Vegas Golden Knights, Kelly McCrimmon. Vegas so quickly has become a place where players want to go. Players appreciate that we're trying to win and uh, I think come to expect it. It's their livelihood and all of those things that go with it. So we try to do uh, what we can to, to help that happen. NHL Morning Skate with Scott Lachlan and Gord Stone. Weekdays 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. Toronto? Yeah, they don't have a face card. Like, they don't have an ace. Morgan's a jack. They have so many non-face cards that these guys are going to have the bullpen by committee. Because the real truth is this. They got a good forward group. But if you don't defend against Boston and Florida, you're not seeing Boston or Florida in round two. That's the exam, and the test will be on this defense. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern. On any gel network radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Hey Toronto, I'm David Morissuti, host of the daily Toronto Me Please podcast, Locked On Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network on the Sirius XM app. Every weekday, we bring you the latest Leafs news and analysis, break down all the action, including this game you're listening to right now, and preview the next one. We're giving you everything a Leafs fan could want, all in a daily 30-minute podcast. Download Locked On Leafs right now on the Sirius XM app, available with all trials and popular plans, or where you get your podcast. Search Locked On Leafs. Join me, Ward Stellick, and Scott Lachlan as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. The Leafs and the Tampa Bay Lightning colliding tonight uh, here at Scotiabank Arena. One more collision coming your way. It'll be the last game of the regular season when these two teams meet again. The starting netminders, Joseph Wall, gets the call for Toronto. He's 3-0-0 against the Lightning in his career. 1.54, 11-9-1 for the rookie and 2.87. Andre Vesilevsky in goal down to our left. He is 14-10-2 against the Maple Leafs as it's cleared into the Leafs zone and punched out at center and knocked down into the zone by Max Domi. Domi into the pursuit, but it is cleared ahead, and it'll be pushed out into the center ice area by Sorelli, only to be turned over, and the Leafs trying to knock it back into the zone. Domi's going to recycle it, though, and play it back into his own end. And here's Morgan Riley, a welcome addition to the Leaf defense core, back into the lineup. As he hands off to Nylander, who gets it up on the wing for McMahon. McMahon barges in, can't get around Hayden Fleury. Plays it around back of the goal, though. And now here are the Lightning coming away with it. Played ahead by Nick Paul. On the right wing side, Fleury sends it in. Wall sending it along the boards, but the Lightning get there to play it back of the net. Collision back of the goal, but here's Isamont trying to come away with it. Centered in front of the goal. Knocked away by the Maple Leafs, and it'll be played out at center ice by Bobby McMahon. And now Nylander able to get in over the line. Pulled on the brakes, able to just keep the puck in, and then he got flattened by Michael Isamont right along the blue line. He was in a pretty vulnerable position when he got pasted. Yeah, he was tied up with Mitchell Chaffee looking for the puck when Isamon stepped into it. Played to the line and in. Matthews line back out there for Toronto. 
And the puck goes off a stick and goes up into the crowd and out of play. And we played a minute 40 and are nicely underway as we introduce our compatriot and longtime friend who tried to kill me just moments earlier, <laughs> James J. Ralph I, Esquire. You assaulted me. Biggest fail of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I've got this stupid Apple Watch that if I, I had bumped into you and all of a sudden I've taken a terrible fall and the, and the medics are on their way. But I hugged you, so I it should have gone off. I know. It should have been fine, yes. Well, I'm, I'm going to be okay. Ice and call here against Tampa. Now, what's interesting about this, Andre Vasilevsky, first time we see him this season. He missed both games between these two clubs earlier after back surgery. And very close, talking to the Tampa broadcasters, to being the Vasilevsky that won a Conn Smythe trophy for them not that long ago. And Joseph Wall, 3-0 and against Tampa in one start. He filled in twice this year for Ilya Samsonov. And unfortunately, I mean, for Samsonov, never got out of the first period of either game. Leaves her down 3-1 and 4-1 and battled back to win both of them. Puck kept into the... Lightning zone grabbed off there by Mock. He takes it around back at the net. Holmberg into the forecheck as it's pushed out onto the left wing side, and Mott gets it down into the Toronto end. Out of the net is uh, Wall to play it into the corner. That's drawn a crowd in the Toronto zone. They battle for it along the wall. Holmberg has his man pinned. Nye's waiting for a loose puck to materialize. Boy, they got everybody in there now. Hack, whack, and slash. And the whack, more slash, some more hack, couple more slashes. Ah, the pucks come free. And it's played off the boards to center ice by Pontus Holmberg. You can't beat that kind of entertainment. Back in over the line come the Lightning. Puck intercepted and chopped out at center ice. And Ryan Reeves will get to it and bounces it down into Lightning territory. Goes into the corner after it. Gets a hit in there. Now Reeves back of the net for Camp. Coming out with a pass back to the point. And a shot. Deflects just wide. One of the Lightning down. And it was uh, another big hit there by Reeves. Into the slot. Another shot goes high over top of the goal. Fourth line doing what it does best. Getting some physicality into the game. Benoit playing it back along the boards. And Reeves steps into Hedberg and sends him flying back behind the goal. Hedberg takes his man down. Reeves getting it back to the point. Another shot goes wide of the Tampa Bay goal. And this line's going to get a big round of applause and well earned as they head to the lead bench. Boy, the roof might have been blown off. And they found the back of the net on that scoring chance. Here's Nylander. Flipping in. It'll be caught about eye high by Vasilevsky. And that will stop play. I don't think you could ask for a lot more from your fourth line. Could you? No. Ryan Reeves. Some big hits. And when Hedman got hit, it was Connor Dewar that he got tied up with. Top of the crease. And it's like their skates clicked. And Hedman went down. And that just set up another opportunity for Ryan Reeves on Matt Dumba. Played down into the area back of the Tampa Bay goal. They'll get it up on the wing. And pushed out at center by Anthony Sorelli. And on the left wing, a backhand pass in front by Chernick. Didn't connect. Leafs. Labushkin has broken or you know, broken his stick. Now it is really broken as it's laying down in the corner. Leafs come away with it and get it ahead. And Bobby McMahon trying to get the puck out at center to at least allow a change. And now it is brought right back in again by Sorelli. He had it knocked away. Good play by the Maple Leafs and is played to the near side for Nylander. He's tripped up. There's going to be a penalty. So the Leafs will draw the first power play opportunity of the game. Brought to you by Subaru. Embrace went, uh, spring weather with Subaru. All-weather drive event. Visit your local Subaru dealer to book a test drive today. And yeah, it's going to be Brendan Hagel is going to go for the trip. And it's Willie Nylander. Almost the same spot, Joe, that he got stood up on a hit by Isomont. That did not deter Nylander for doing the same thing. Carry the puck over the line. And this time he's able to draw the penalty from Hagel. And... 
Maybe we should forget about the power play stats for a bit. Well, I'm going to remind you that in February, they were 14 of 28, 50%. Now that fell off the table in the month of March, though. Leafs with the puck on the right wing side, keeping it in at the blue line, but it's off a stick and comes to center. And hustling back after it is Nylander to take it away from Glenn Denning. There's no question it has missed Mitch Marner, who is ticketed to be back on the weekend as it's cleared back down into the Toronto end. Right now, the Leafs 0 for 14 in their last five games in the power play and just 4 for 49 in their last 17 games. Yep. The month of March was 4 for 44. Nylander in with a pass. It hits a skate. Domi... Got it around back of the net. Nylander freed it up for Matthews. Into the slot area. Tavares! And he whistled a shot that was deflected by Anthony Sorelli wide of the goal. Domi keeping the puck in for Riley. Down low it goes. Shot by Matthews. Stop Tavares with a rebound attempt and not making contact. Matthews back. It goes to Domi. To Riley. To Domi again on the left wing. A little saucer pass in front. And Tavares whipped it wide. At least they're getting opportunities here. Matthews back of the goal. Nylander mishandles the puck but gets to it in the near corner. Got some support, but it's going to be backhanded out at center ice. 36 seconds left in the power play, and Riley's right back in. Here's Nylander on the wing with a shot. That's blocked, and the Lightning thinking about bringing it out. Sorelli works in over the line, dropping it back into the slot. A pass back, and Riley got back to knock it away at the last second. Shot to a sharp angle, handled there by Wall. And the penalty has 14 seconds left in it. Holmberg dropping the puck back. Brought on now by Robertson. Robertson sends it in around the boards. It'll come back to the net. Chipped into the corner. Penalty has expired. Shot by Bertuzzi. Went wide of the goal. McCabe keeping it in at the blue line. But as he tried to go D to D, it goes off his stick. And up into the crowd and out of play. 13.28 to go in a scoreless first period. The Leafs have had the first three shots on goal. It is a nothing-nothing tie. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050. It's that. Merging influences from Afropop to chamber music. Vampire Weekend helped reshape the sound of indie rock and alternative. As their fifth album, Only God Was Above Us, arrives, hear the story behind it. I just started playing this riff. This had the feel of a good, simple pop song. Alongside nearly two decades of indie classics. Vampire Weekend Radio. For a limited time starting Friday on Channel 35. And the Sirius XM app. The biggest names in the game. Trying to get behind, wrist the line, and walks in. Put it between his legs. Shoots it. Score! NHL Play by Play on Sirius XM. Hockey 24 7 on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. This is the NHL. These are pros. You don't want guys to put good power play units on, don't take penalties. You don't want good power play units to score goals when you've given up a whole bunch, kill them. You don't like it, do something about it. If you want to reward your guys who had a good game with a chance to get some more goals and points, do it. If I was a coach, I wouldn't care. Who cares? Worry about your own team, don't worry about mine. Sirius XM, NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91. And on your schedule with the Sirius XM app. The points with Boomer Gordon. Andrew Burnett is your Jack Adams winner. Oh. 70 points in 52 games. You project that over 82, Jake. That's an 111 point pace. So they've gone head to head with the big boys of the West all year. Andrew Burnett inherited a new GM in Barry Trotz and a sinking payroll. And he's got this team playing as well as any team in the NHL. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Three and one in their last 11, but the Tampa Bay Lightning have been red hot. They're 11, three and two in their last 16 games. And dare I say, the Boston Bruins and the New York Rangers, who are battling for first in the East, know all about that. That's, it's gonna be very interesting based on who you wanna face. And I don't think anybody wants to finish second in the East and have to play the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. The alternative are teams like Detroit, Washington, Washington, Philadelphia. Yeah. Runway 
second in the Metro. I mean, you got to be careful, obviously, in the playoffs. Careful what you wish for. Leaf fans might remember that last yeah, year. Yeah, let's not have that we want Florida. Yeah, you don't, Can we you just don't. slide but, that past but, everybody? But when it comes down to it, I mean, I think you'd say, I think we match up better against certain yes. teams. And, I mean, certainly we've known that the Leafs are likely going to be Florida or Boston. Kucherov carries the puck out at center and flips it in. Nick Paul goes into the corner. Kucherov back of the net, tried to center, but he hit the back of the goal. And now McMahon with a long lead pass, trying to spring Nylander, but it was partially blocked, and now it's a delayed offside that Hedberg takes advantage of and gets in over the line. Hedberg taken to the boards by McMahon efficiently. Around back of the net for Benoit. Chopped at it, but didn't get enough of it as it's not cleared. Kept in by Radish and into the corner. Benoit gets another opportunity with it. This time finds Tavares. And Tavares is backhand looking for Nylander, who had snuck in behind the defense, but not far enough. Now the pass comes ahead to him. Nylander in on the left wing. Pulls up. Now decides to carry back into neutral ice as the Leafs are changing. Finds Dewar open on the right wing. Dewar gets down into the corner. Camp is out in front. Dewar tried to take it to the hoop. And it was knocked back of the goal. Dewar works back of the goal. Fourth line out there. And they had a wonderful first shift as Camp got knocked down and then slid into the official. The scrum is in the far corner. Puck comes free to, hey, uh, to uh, Reeves. He got hit from behind there by Chernick. And it is lifted high to center ice. And now here the Lightning just flipping it into the Toronto zone. Back against the boards. The puck comes up on the right wing for Reeves. He's going to play around back of the net for Morgan Riley. Riley took a hit but freed it up for Labushkin. Labushkin gets it back on a nice play. And Riley is out. Pass up on the right side. Reeves will send it down into the zone. Leafs are changing again with 11.36 to go in a scoreless first. Puck in the center ice area. Turned over again for the Maple Leafs. Connor Timmins trying to play it ahead. Deflects down into the zone. Taken to the far boards. The Leafs couldn't come up with it. Nice in with a good offensive hit in the corner. Down the boards. Brody unable to keep it in cleanly, but now the Leafs do. Robertson into the left wing corner trying to find a loose puck. Back of the net. Slamming in there was Pontus Holmberg. The rookies are pouncing around in the offensive zone as it's played out at center ice. I think not enough has been talked about. But this is the kid line, isn't it? Well, I think the reason is Sheldon Keefe at one point a few games ago said this isn't going to last, this combination. Obviously because of injuries are together and they've had some success of late. Played in by Bertuzzi now into the lightning zone. Stamkos playing it around back of the net. It comes to the left wing side. Benoit back of the goal. Bertuzzi swings to the far side. It hit a broken stick and Domi will take advantage of that to get it back. Domi with it now to the point and he tried to make a pass to McCabe. That didn't work and then McCabe trying to get a hit in there on Hagel but Hagel gets the puck into the slot area and it's knocked away at the last second but a penalty coming to Toronto. Puck into the corner on the far side. A long pass in front of the net. Hagel trying to get it back to the blue line and does. Chernick over on the far side to Hedman. Hedman will play into the corner. Gets it returned. Stretching it out to the near side to Kucherov. Kucherov back to Hedman. Hedman with a shot. Scores! It's not a power play goal, but it might as well be. But a long wrister from Hedman. Is going to provide the opening goal of the hockey game. The Leafs not give up a ton of these. Two against Florida a couple of nights ago. And the very first shot on goal for the Tampa Bay Lightning comes at 10.03 of the opening period on a wrist shot. There are lots of traffic in front. Wall tried to glance a little to his left and it sailed over his shoulder to the right. As the Leafs couldn't get in the lane, Anthony Sorelli was the one right in front of Joseph Ball to take his eyes away. I tell you, Tampa's shooting percentage in the first period this season against the Leafs is Off pretty the amazing. Charts. I think it was three on four shots against Elias Samsonov in Tampa before he got pulled. 13th of the year for Hedman, and Kucherov will draw the assist. 
What a season he is having, leading the league and scoring now 128 points. One up on Nathan McKinnon. Played down into the Tampa Bay zone. A pass to the line, not out, kept in by the Maple Leafs. A drop pass goes to Riley. He got it through, but it hit Vasilevsky right in the chest, and he was able to smother any rebound. And a face-off will come in the Tampa Bay zone when we return. The opening goal goes to the Tampa Bay Lightning. They lead it one to nothing. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. And now it's time for our Subaru weather report. So, Harold, what's it looking like? Jim, we can expect more thunderstorms as the evening approaches and then overnight... Oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, can I get uh, two number sixes with a side of curly fries? Hold the onions, please. Yeah. Uh... Harold, are you in the drive-thru right now? Jim, no one listens to this. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, great. Weather reports don't matter when you drive a Subaru. Visit your local Subaru dealer today and book a test drive during the all-weather drive event. Today, when it comes to following sports, a basic box score just won't cut it. Get the stats behind the stats with NHL Edge. So you won't just see McCarr's time on ice. You'll see where he spent. You won't just know Matthew scored. You'll know how hard he shot it. And you won't just get OV shot total. You'll know where he shot it from. Even if they're all from the same place. Know more about every stat, every shift, and every star with NHL Edge. This spring, transform your ride with the 2024 Toyota Camry SE Upgrade from Maple Toyota. With its athletic styling, great power and fuel efficiency, Toyota Safety Sense, and high levels of innovative technology, you'll be sure to enjoy wherever the road takes you this spring in this fun size ride. The 2024 Toyota Camry SE Upgrade is in stock and available now for immediate delivery at Maple Toyota. Make it easy. Make it maple. Visit mapletoyota.com. Part of the Zankin Auto Group. Rick Vives signing an autograph for one of our Armed Forces uh, recipients tonight. Kind of ironic. The previous uh, leader in most goals ever scored in Maple Leaf hockey history. Hey, what about this? The overdrive, the overdrive guys are asking us about rivalries. Mm. What do you think of the Ranger-Devils rivalry? You think it's still going? Because two seconds into the game tonight. Oh, the heavyweights. <laughs> Ten heavyweights, two seconds in. Wow. Of course, um, that uh, Rempe was the one that... Got it started, yeah. Well, on, on a suspension not long ago. Played into the corner, far side, Matthews. Big hit there. Got the puck free for Domi. Sends it back behind the net for Bertuzzi in front on. Matthews is robbed by Veselevsky with the right pad. Boy, that was set up nicely. Here the Panther or the Lightning getting the puck in front of the net and a shot. That was blocked. It comes back to the point. Long shot deflected in front of the goal. Another shot goes wide of the net. And another penalty coming to Toronto. If they'll touch the puck. Referees tonight are Trevor Hansen and Peter McDougall. Scott Cherry and uh, Devin Berg are the linesmen. Toronto 78's got a minor penalty for slashing. And it's T.J. Brody, and I'll tell you something, with the way the, penalty, the specialty teams have been for the Leafs, I think it's a legitimate concern as to how games are going to be called in the playoffs. You know, if all of a sudden the Leafs are tougher, but they're going to take more penalty. Oh, my goodness. Was it a bit of a weak one? I did nope. not see it. One-handed. And, Wow. I mean, like, like I said, and Tampa's got the best power play in the National Hockey League. 11 for 31 in their last 10. Against the boards, the Leafs are able to force it out at center. David Camp battles as it goes free. Dewar will give chase, but he'll be beaten to the puck by Braden Point. Point sends it around on the boards, and it is Hedman sending it out. A good hit there stops Nicholas Paul. The puck still against the boards, and now back into the... Lightning zone and Hedman will start out with a drop pass for Kucherov. Is Kucherov the most valuable player in this league? Oh, he's got to get a lot of consideration. Yeah, I think you're right. Puck comes free. The Leafs get it airborne and just over the outstretched reach of Hedman. And that's a large reach to get it down the ice. Minute 13 in the power play. 
Brought on by Point. He'll drop it off. Paul gets across the line. Stamkos sending it around the boards to the near side to Kucherov. Kucherov turns the puck over, and the Leafs get it out at center, but it's McMahon with it on a one man rush, and from a bad angle, his shot on goal was handled easily by Vasilevsky. Plus, Holmberg got locked onto there on the way out of the zone. Here's Stamkos in with a shot. It's going off a stick and up into the screen and out of play. Kucherov and Hagel drawing the assists on the Hedman goal. And it's 1-0 Tampa Bay. I think the funny the thing with Kucherov is he doesn't go end-to-end like McKinnon or McDavid. It's not the highlight reel always shots up under the crossbar. But the sneakiest plays, I think, in the league, he makes. You and don't he, know whether he's throwing it to the net. He's going back door. He's, he's also, he can, so, sorry, go ahead. Go, and, and his ability to shoot with just his wrist and then wire it without telegraphing it to anybody. Is, he's also sneaky dirty. Oh, yeah. A pass almost intercepted there by and now is by David Camp. And he backhands it down into Tampa Bay territory. The Leafs were scored on during the process of their first penalty. And when the extra attacker was enough and the Lightning scored without having to go to the power play. So they score six on five and chopping it out here is Nylander and the penalty expires. Brody's back on. Cleared into the corner and Brody and Benoit go after the loose puck. Out come the Lightning with it. Back to the point. Radish. Had his shot blocked, and Matthews trying to break in on the left wing. Couldn't get around the defense. Pulls up, pass into the slot for Riley. And that shot was blocked. The rebound, trying to center, had it hit the back of the net. Played around back of the goal. Domi in pursuit, but can't get to it. And it's played high to center ice and in on a delayed offside. And it's going to be whistled down by the linesman, and that'll bring it all the way back into Tampa Bay territory, I believe. With six, uh, five minutes and 58 seconds remaining here in the period. The Leafs five on five has been their strength. You already talked about the power plays problems in the last month. 212 goals this year. Dallas has 208. Colorado 207. Vancouver 198. Edmonton 195. The hierarchy of the National Hockey League and right that, there. Now that, this is very interesting. You said it went down. It could have been icing. could have been offside. It was obviously offside because we got a commercial break. Okay. Isn't that interesting. Yes. Yeah. Right. You found that interesting. <laughs> yes, I did. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. They are among the greatest to ever play their sports. Caitlin Clark is the all time scoring leader. They are legends and icons. Holly Bird hit the shot with no second spot. I know how he did it. And you can hear them right now on the all new Sirius XM app. We are here with Iowa superstar Caitlin Clark. I'm so focused on winning. It's never anything I ever take for granted. Here comes Larry Bird, the Hall of Famer, and he just won Legend of the Year. Legend of the Year, isn't that something? For access to the game's greats, we lie on the leader in sports audio. Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. The point with Boomer Gordon. Andrew Burnett is your Jack Adams winner. Oh. 70 points in 52 games. You project that over 82, Jake. That's an 111 point pace. So they've gone head to head with the big boys of the West all year. Andrew Burnett inherited a new GM in Barry Trotz and a sinking payroll. And he's got this team playing as well as any team in the NHL. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. There is no competition in soccer quite like the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XM FC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jude Bellingham's driving, driving, scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage and all the top matches are on Sirius XM FC 157 and the all-new Sirius XM app. Join me, Ward Stellick, and Scott Laughlin as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. I'm Rob, Jim Taddy, and Josh Cloak coming along. Owen Hall, Matt Cordadero running the operation. Jag King 
learning the ropes back at Command Central along with Luca Moya here keeping us on the air. Domi getting it up on the right side Bertuzzi trying to work around one man then had it knocked to the boards down goes Bertuzzi and the puck comes free and Stamkos gets it out at center and it is flipped in by Sorelli into the corner. Timmons is taken to the boards efficiently there. The puck around to the near point. Kept in by Chernick into the corner along the near half wall. Back to Chernick into the slot. He dishes off on the left wing side. A shot by Fleury. Went wide in the rebound. That's caromed all the way down into Tampa Bay territory. 1-0 Lightning. On a goal by Victor Hedman. What a marvelous career he has had. In Tampa Bay, cleared into the leaf zone. Whoa! <laughs> Jotted around the boards. He was in a little difficulty there, but the puck turned over, and Janot got a shot away, and Wall has gloved that and stops play with a faceoff coming in the Toronto end. As you mentioned, Joseph Wall, just his first start of the season, second career against Tampa, although he's 3-0. and Remember he played one of the late games in Tampa last year, and that's when... You and I both started to take note of, you know what, this kid gives you a lot of confidence when he's in there. Been beaten here early in this game at a long screenshot earlier in this game by Victor Hedman. By the way, Hedman now 12 points in his last 11 games. Three goals in that stretch. Draw to the right of Wall in the Toronto zone. 4.51 to play in the period. Draw scrummed. And Riley goes around back of the net with a pass ahead for Nyes. Got it ahead for Robertson. The linesman said that that was just a shade offside. Took a pretty big hit as well. By the way, Matthew Nyes may enjoy playing against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Because Nyes in his two games against Tampa this year, three goals and six points. Do you remember the game in Tampa? Max Domi set him up twice. In the third period, the Leafs were down 3-1 into the third. Tied it, and then John Tavares won it in overtime. Riley shooting the puck in. Lightning get it up on the left wing and out into neutral ice with a pass. It's broken up and sent back into the Tampa Bay zone. A pass goes off the glass, and Robertson couldn't get it initially. Now has it in the neutral zone. He'll just backhand it in and head to the bench. Pontus Holmberg into the four check. But he'll go to the bench now, and it's the Tavares line coming over the boards for Toronto. Brought out slowly by Matt Dumba. He got it ahead. Cut off there by Jake McCabe. McCabe overskated the puck, and then a centering effort was knocked away, and McCabe is able to get it up ahead for Nylander. Nylander just rolling it down into... Tampa Bay territory. Flurry there to get it around on the boards, and then Flurry was flattened by Bobby McMahon. But a penalty is coming to Toronto. Down into the corner, and the shot is stopped. The Leafs will touch the puck here. I'll tell you one thing. Could be a real quick playoffs if this is how it's going to be called. Did, was this not just shoulder to shoulder? I thought so. And they're calling it tripping. All right. And I got to say, a little bit of a slew foot. 16 25, the time of the penalty. And the penalty kill brought to you by CMC Markets. Uh, take your little trading to the next level with $0 commission on stocks. At least come away with it. Sorry, Jim. Let's say it takes a real man to admit he was wrong, right? You were wrong? No, the referee. Oh. The guy was oh. wrong. No, <laughs> I, was... Ne you've never been wrong. I was uh -huh. saying we were going to have to stop the whole show. <laughs> Here's a chance for Point to get in over the line. No, it was the right call. Okay. Back to the blue line. It comes to the near side to Kucherov. Kucherov getting it down into the corner. Back to the blue line. Just kept in there by ha uh, Hedman. Around back of the net. Kucherov to the near wall. Trying to get it back to the blue line, but the Leafs are onto it quickly. And Camp has sent it out and down the ice. Leafs have been more aggressive against this Tampa power play, haven't they? It's not the collapse and give them time and space. Now brought in by Nick Paul. Broken up at the blue line. Backhanded by Matthews. Didn't get much on it, but got it in the right spot to send it down the ice. 
Hedman with a minute to go in the power play. Circles from behind the goal. Got it ahead, and now here's Point. Working in on the right side, and he got leveled there by Pottis Holmberg. And it is shot out and down into the Tampa Bay end. Lightning getting their second unit over the boards. Radish oh. dropping it back. Then an errant pass and an icing coming here against the Tampa Bay Lightning. A leap penalty killing has been impressive here in the early going. Only 2.10 left and the shots are only 6-4 to four and they're favoring the Leafs. Braden Point might have been looking for a penalty there. Well, I think he ran into his own man as much as Holmberg was there. Anthony Leclerc seemed to have as much to do with the collision as anything. Leafs win the faceoff and Brody backpedals to his own zone and the Leafs will get it out and flip it down the ice courtesy of uh, Matthew Nyes. Out come the power play unit for Tampa. Got to the line, oh. broken oh. up again. And down went to Brandon Hagel, who is pleading for a penalty and none coming. Three seconds left. McMahon will step on the ice as it's shot down into the Toronto zone. Labushkin back of the net, quickly played by Morgan Riley. And Bertuzzi is able to chip it out into the center ice area. But quickly shot right back in again. And back of the net, it'll be played to Labushkin. And Labushkin playing it ahead for Domi. To jump into the rush. Able to turn it over, though. Here's uh, Bertuzzi on the left wing in front of the net. Looking for either Matthews or Domi, but it didn't connect. Back come the lightning in over the line. And a tripping call here. I think it might be interference. Morgan Riley trying to follow his man and got stood up at the Leaf line. So the Leafs will go to their first power play of the night. Glenn uh, Denning going to the box. Tampa number 11, minor penalty interference. And it's 103 to go, so. Seems like the last four or five power plays the Leafs have had have been broken up by the intermission. Yeah, that's true too. Isn't and then, it? This is 1857. Now this is one of those as well where you could say Riley knew what he was doing and didn't try to avoid Glenn Denning or Glenn Denning was trying to be cute. We've seen this called both ways. Power play brought to you by Subaru. Embrace uh, spring weather with a Subaru all-weather drive event. Visit your local Subaru dealer to book a test drive today. Face off in the circle to the right. Uh, Vasilevsky, 1-0 Tampa Bay. The draw one cleanly by Tavares. One-timer on the far side scores! He's got 63 of them. It starts with a face-off win. Back to Riley, to Matthews, and it takes all of three seconds to tie the game. A little bit of a screen as Vasilevsky was able to get over. But I think it was Hagel that was kind of sifting out towards Matthews. And this might be, oh no, I mean this, this goes to the left of Hagel, but it's the perfect shot. Blocker side, far side. On Vasilevsky just inside the post, and this game is tied at one on the least seventh shot of the period. 99th point of the year. Another little bit of history about to be made. Daryl Sittler twice, Doug Gilmore twice, players that have had 100 point seasons. In fact, today is the anniversary of Daryl Sittler's first 100 point season. And Austin Matthews has got 63 goals. Puck down in the offensive zone. Reeves up against the boards. Camp battles along the wall. Reeves got it freed up back to the point to Brody. He walks the line. Dishes off for Dewar. Dewar will send it to the net. Pad save and the rebound by Reeves. Went just wide. Back into the slot. Another shot in traffic. Reeves battling for it in there. And Vasilevsky has got it. And Reeves is being double teamed. Maybe triple teamed in the gold crease. His helmet's off. 
Well, I think Chernock was lucky he didn't pick up a cross checking penalty there as well. As Ryan Reeves, without his helmet, gets up and makes his way back towards the Leaf bench, much to the delight of the Leaf fans. Yeah, Chernock was came in and I'm not sure if it was Reeves that he drilled or David Camp. 22.5 seconds to go, but Henry Vasilevsky coming up with a couple of big stops with traffic in front, and Ryan Reeves was sniffing around looking for the loose puck. John Tavares won the faceoff that Morgan Riley sent over to Matthews, so he gets the assist as well. <laughs> a little tight being shown on the big screen above center ice. You couldn't be more than a couple of months old. Back to the blue line it comes. Played along the boards and flipped into the slot area and the Lightning will play it out into neutral ice with a dozen seconds left to go in the period. Here's Matthews working back to the line and in. Long shot will be handled by Veselevsky. Centering effort won't make it and that will do it. Pretty solid period for the Maple Leafs who outshoot Tampa Bay 11-4. Well, I mean, the huge parts of the, the specialty teams, right? Even though it doesn't go down as a power play goal for Tampa, they do score with the goalie on the bench and a delayed penalty, but the Leafs kill two Tampa power plays, and they make good in their only. So on the goal by Matthews. 18 consecutive penalties have actually been, although it, it, it is, I mean, it was a penalty. It just didn't get called, so it's technically not a penalty anymore. Anyway, on the so, penalty kill. It still say specialty team. Yes, 18, 18 in a By row. By the way, six on five. The Leafs have been given up a lot. Whether nope. it's been Carolina, Edmonton. Yes. net empty, everything uh, else. Yeah, you're right. Against Florida the other night. We'll, we'll work on that before the postseason yes. starts, Mr. Ralph. We'll step aside. Jim Taddy and Josh Cloak coming your way. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Step into spring on the all-new Sirius XM app. Feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel Feel the sunshine break with mood-boosting melodies of Happy Radio. It's a beautiful day. Breezy road trip mixtapes. Spring cleaning soundtracks. And more app-only channels, specials, and shows. Packed with positive vibes for the season of new beginnings. Just search Spring Breaks on the Sirius XM app. The Points with Boomer Gordon. Andrew Burnett is your Jack Adams winner. Oh. 70 points in 52 games. You project that over 82, Jake. That's an 111-point pace. So they've gone head-to-head -head with the big boys of the West all year. Andrew Burnett inherited a new GM in Barry Trotz and a sinking payroll. And he's got this team playing as well as any team in the NHL. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Hockey 24 7 on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. This is the NHL. These are pros. You don't want guys to put good power play units on, don't take penalties. You don't want good power play units to score goals when you've given up a whole bunch, kill them. You don't like it, do something about it. If you want to reward your guys who had a good game with a chance to get some more goals and points, do it. If I was a coach, I wouldn't care. Who cares? Worry about your own team, don't worry about mine. Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91. And on your schedule with the Sirius XM app. NHL Morning Skate. Andrew Burnett, head coach of the National Predators. I think Roman Yossi gets underrated nowadays. I think maybe the consistency that he does it every year, um, you take it for granted a little bit. I mean, he's done everything in this game. His ability to raise his game is, is very unique. You know, I've been around some really good, great defensemen. Uh, he, he's right up there with them, and, and he does get over them. NHL Morning Skate with Scott Lachlan and Gord Stellar. Weekdays, 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. NHL Morning Skate. The general manager of the Vegas Golden Knights, Kelly McCrimmon. Vegas so quickly has become a place where players want to go. Players appreciate that we're trying to win, and uh, I think come to expect it. Their livelihood and all of those things that go with it. So we try to do uh, what we can to, to help that happen. NHL Morning Skate with Scott Lachlan and Gord Stellar. Weekdays, 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. There is no competition in soccer quite like the UEFA Champions League. 
and it's on Sirius XMFC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage, where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jude Bellingham's driving, driving scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage, and all the top matches are on Sirius XMFC 157 and the all-new Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. Toronto, yeah, they don't have a face card. Like, they don't have an ace. Morgan's a jack. They have so many non-face cards that these guys are going to have to bullpen by committee. Because the real truth is this. They got a good forward group. But if you don't defend against Boston and Florida, you're not seeing Boston or Florida in round two. That's the exam, and the test will be on this defense. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The biggest names in the game. Trying to get behind, wrist the line, and walks in, put it between his legs, shoots it, score! NHL Play by Play on Sirius XM. Is on. TSN 1050 and the Leafs Radio Network. The Leafs live here. Face off in the circle to the right. Uh, Vasilevsky, 1-0, Tampa Bay. The draw one cleanly by Tavares. One-timer on the far side. Oh, yes, guy, he does. Austin Matthews ties it at one. That's where we stand after 20 minutes of play. After 20 is brought to you by Subaru. Embrace spring weather with the Subaru all-weather drive event. Visit your local Subaru dealer to book a test drive today. Jim Taddy, Josh Cloak from The Athletic here. So let's do this in uh, sort of inverse order. I mean, first of all, the, the special teams, a big factor in that period. That means the least penalty kill and the least power play with Morgan Riley back. Nice to see that goal right off the faceoff. Yeah, and, and I think that's why Morgan Riley Riley is so valuable to this team. His puck movement from the top, um, I mean, he knows these players so well. He knows their tendencies. That's what he can bring yeah. that Connor Timmins and even Timothy Lilligren can't. He's been here the whole time. He knows where Austin Matthews likes the puck. He knows where John Tavares likes the puck. Uh, that's what makes him so critical to this team, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the power play worked for the Leafs, and the penalty kill was really good. I mean, I, th- I thought that uh, really Tampa gained control of this first period based on their power play. Even though it didn't score, they got in position. They got behind the Leafs. They pushed the Leafs back in the Leafs defensive zone, and that kept going until maybe five minutes left in that period. Yeah, for sure. And I, I, I just think that the, the Leafs penalty kill as well is looking a lot more aggressive, right? They're looking a lot more, um, they're getting to the right spots quicker, right? And I think that's something that's been really critical for this team to identify is how to improve the penalty kill. The power play, okay, they scored tonight. Still a work in progress. Uh, once you get Mitch Marner back, should look a lot better as yeah. well. Um, but look, the special teams can be the difference come playoff time. Right, that the, the margins are so thin that, that penalties are called so much less. So that if you get a power play, it's it's that much more important, right? Well, and, and also uh, you you can sort of change the momentum on a team. Tampa comes in with a power play is firing at twenty nine point three percent. Yeah, they score on a uh, delayed penalty call, and then they get two power plays. So to stop them from scoring there is a big debt because. They're used to getting production out of that unit. For sure. And it was critical for the Leafs to get that goal late and not allow the Lightning to go into the first period with that momentum, right? Because it, I thought Tampa, I thought both teams played pretty well. Both teams looked pretty aggressive in, in their respective offensive zones I, here. I thought Tampa was played more of their game for, I want to say, two-thirds of that period. They played the way they wanted to. They had good position in the Leafs zone, didn't score except around that the delayed penalty, but could have scored a number of goals, just didn't get the opportunity. I thought the Leafs were sort of back a bit, and then then came on. And Austin Matthews scores. I think he might have a future as a Leaf. What do you think? (laughs) I got 63 reasons to back up this year's success story. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, so I was wondering, uh, you know, who was going to jumpstart this team, and as it turns out, because we're so accustomed to lately um, other players doing it, nice to see Austin Matthews do it. Look, and I mentioned this before puck drop, I think this year, more than any other year, and it's hard to put a finger on why, Tatman, but for me, it just feels like Austin Matthews understands that this is his team, and 
he has the opportunity and the ability, more so than any other season, yes. to take this team on his back. Yep. I, I, I mean, I 63 is, is a big part of the reason why, but it just feels like he has the confidence and the, the leadership, which is a vague kind of term. I think everybody is aware that this is Austin Matthews' team in a way that it maybe wasn't in the past. And I think Austin Matthews knows that we're seeing it right now with Alex Ovechkin chasing Wayne Gretzky's record. Right. And you can say that he's the greatest goal, goal scorer of all time. And you can say that as well with the confidence of the fact that he's won a Stanley Cup. So there's no asterisk that's going to go with Alex Ovechkin's name. And I just, I think... Austin Matthews is a lot more determined to win. I think he's old enough now that we're starting to creep towards those legacy years, and he knows that success is going to be defined by playoff success, and it just feels like he's ready to take this team on his back. If there was a way to describe his season without the goal total, it would still be an impressive story, how he's played. He deserves Selkie um, his Selkie nomination. He deserves some Selkie love with his two-way game. Uh, after after what happened in, in Buffalo, he's probably yeah. out of the Lady, the Lady Bing. Lady Bing is out, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> fine. Yeah. All right, that's, that's probably not one he's really dead set on winning anyway. But Austin Matthews is one of the best three players in the game right now. He should, he, he probably won't for a variety of reasons because it's such a tight kind of field. Um, he should be in the MVP conversation. Right, yeah. another player playing against him tonight, Kucherov could could take it, but it just feels like Austin Matthews understands. Like he's getting hot again at just the right time, and I think yeah. he understands. And and we should preface all of this by the fact that he's doing this as of late without Mitch Marner, right? His premier setup yeah. man, yeah. Right, so if you can get this continued production without having to rely, maybe not the best word, but utilize your premier setup man. It speaks to what could be possible in the playoffs. Well, and to that point, uh, you know, for most of the season, the trouble with Matthews and Marner was finding somebody to play on the left side that could match them. They sort of found that with Nyes, but they had a lot of trouble finding that guy. And now with Marner out, all of a sudden Matthews is still delivering. So we're always centered on who's going to play on the left side. Yeah. And we didn't worry about who was going to play on the right side if Marner wasn't there. I think he comes back and plays beside them. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah, which, which then brings about the grand question. Where does Max Domi play? Is that the grand question? I think it is, yes. <laughs> I, 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 I told you before, there's people smarter than me and get paid a lot more money than me who are going to make that decision. And, and if you didn't say that, I would have. <laughs> that's, that's two, guy. I you, know. You I, said you get one <laughs> shot in. That's two. Well, it's, uh, you know, I, I'm into the daily double. It's <laughs> pretty good period by the Leafs. Um, again, you know, you go back to the power play, it scores. There's firing at almost 30% does not. If that's in a playoff series, at any point in the playoff series, when the premier power play doesn't work and the other guy does, that's a pretty big sway. Well, it just it, it changes the momentum. And now if you're the Leafs, you have to feel a lot better going into this intermission, coming out into the second period, just because you've built up that momentum. Like you said, you've stifled like a, a really, really good power play. Yeah. You gave your own power play a chance to build momentum. Right, you have to feel good coming into this period because, again, we've seen this. This Leafs team isn't necessarily one that needs to win every single period to win the game, right? So they're still in a really good spot right now. I would suggest to you that they figured out a way to even the score within the first 20 minutes, and that's uh, that's an important fact to go into the dressing room. And they, yeah, and they have to feel good about it. I think Joseph Walls looked okay, right? He hasn't played in a while. I think. There, there, there's reasons to feel good coming into the... That's not a lot of action. Yeah. It's only had four shots. I know. Well, we'll, we'll see. Uh, the out-of-town scoreboard is next. This is Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey on TSN 1050, the iHeartRadio app and the Leafs Radio Network. And now it's time for our Subaru weather report. So, Harold, what's it looking like? Jim, it's a lovely spring day here on the beach. I came here for some solo time, like I do, but I got hungry instantly, so I went to Bob's Boardwalk Beaster when Bob says, Sorry, cash only. Luckily for me, I always have a $5 bill stashed in my sandals, so I give it to Bob, and he says, We don't accept foot money here. That's Thanks, how he talks. But Weather now I'm reports starving, don't and I'm matter when you drive a Subaru. You know, get... Visit your local Subaru dealer today and book a test drive during the all-weather drive event. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall... From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuss shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. 
there's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age. Breaking story from Alpine News Network. Ron is a teacher helping bright minds, but this time he needed help. Alpine Credit sent a cosmic superhero with a debt consolidation loan. She conjured a magic book, Debt Consolidation 101. Lesson 1, consolidate debt into one low monthly payment. Lesson 2, nothing. It's a short book. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Just for license 12616. Hello, people of the GTA. Patio season is around the corner, but why wait for packed parks and King Street when you can head to Canada's favorite paradise, Cuba, for less? Book early with Sunwing and kick back in Holguin or Cayo Santa Maria, where the mojitos are always fresh. When you save more, you can do more. Book with your local travel agent or at... You deserve paint that stands up to life for life. With Seco Clean Surface at 30% off until April 3rd, create something to be proud of and stay proud of. Find a retailer near you at seco.ca. Seco, see color. Find your Easter meal for less at Walmart with our guaranteed lowest advertised price on selected Easter meal essentials like hickory smoked bone and ham. Now only $1.37 per pound. On for a limited time. Start saving online at walmart.ca or in store today. Did you fix that leaky tap? Uh-huh. How about that loose doorknob? Uh-huh. Right now, we can get a free medium pizza from Two for One Pizza. Did somebody say free pizza? See, it's not just the kids that have selective hearing. Right now, get a free medium one-topping pizza with a minimum $25 purchase before tax and delivery. Limited time offer. Online orders only. Visit 2 for one pizzacom and use coupon code FREEM. The Out of Town Scoreboard is brought to you by Maple Toyota. Build your next dream Toyota at Maple Toyota. Check out Maple Toyota's pre-owned inventory arriving daily. Guy, guy, it's time to Toyota. Visit mapletoyota.com. And here's what we have. Uh, the Rangers 2-0 over the Devils at the end of the first period at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Line brawl started the game. Eight players kicked out of the game two seconds in. Old school. Later on, Edmonton and Dallas, that starts at 9.30. Seattle and L.A. against the Kings, that also starts at 9.30. And at 10, the Canucks visiting the Arizona Coyotes. In our game, it is 1-1. The Leafs in Tampa had been scoring his 13th at 10.03. And at 19 minutes even on a power play, Matthews with goal number 63. That's why it's tied at 1. The second period is next. This is Bolsa Canadian Leafs Hockey on TSN 1050, the iHeart Radio app and the Leafs Radio Network. Hockey 24 7 on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. This is the NHL. These are pros. You don't want guys to put good power play units on, don't take penalties. You don't want good power play units to score goals when you've given up a whole bunch, kill them. You don't like it, do something about it. If you want to reward your guys who had a good game with a chance to get some more goals and points, do it. If I was a coach, I wouldn't care. Who cares? Worry about your own team, don't worry about mine. Sirius XM, NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91. And on your schedule with a Sirius XM app. The Point with Boomer Gordon. Andrew Burnett is your Jack Adams winner. Oh. 70 points in 52 games. You project that over 82, Jake. That's an 111-point pace. So they've gone head-to-head -head with the big boys of the West all year. Andrew Burnett inherited a new GM in Barry Trotz and a sinking payroll. And he's got this team playing as well as any team in the NHL. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. There is no competition in soccer quite like the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XMFC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jim Bellingham's driving, driving scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage and all the top matches are on Sirius XMFC 157 and the all-new Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. Serrano, yeah, they don't have a face card. Like, they don't have an ace. Morgan's a jack. They have so many non-face cards that these guys are going to have to bullpen by committee. Because the real truth is this. They got a good forward group. But if you don't defend against Boston and Florida, you're not seeing Boston or Florida in round two. That's the exam, and the test will be on this 
defense. The Bauer Blend. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Join me, Ward Stellick, and Scott Laughlin as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. One of the greats in Toronto Maple Leaf hockey history, Ron Ellis, has been caught by that young lad from Arizona. In points, I mean, it's amazing. Every night he's doing that. Now he's got another point streak going that is extended to nine games, eight goals, and 17 points as the puck is down in the Toronto zone. Pushed up on the wing there by Riley. He couldn't get it out. Matthews falls, but Riley is able to push it out. And a, well, never mind. I guess he fell because he was tripped. And the Tampa Bay Lightning are going to the penalty box. Just uh, another slew foot. Tampa 38, minor penalty, tripping. <laughs> another closer look at it. It looked like Austin Matthews from here was just trying to tight turn in his own end, but this might be very similar to the penalty we saw by Bobby McMahon in the first period. Yeah, a little kick to the back of the legs. So Hagel in the box, and the Leafs who scored on their last power play go back to the opportunity here. Face off to the right in the Tampa Bay zone. Goes into the corner. Played around the boards to the near side. Tyler Mott will get rid of it down the ice, forcing Wall into making a save, and he'll leave the puck at the side of the goal for Morgan Riley. Riley back into the lineup after suffering an upper body injury. Matthews gets a drop pass to Domi across the line. That's offside. Domi made the extra move right at the line, and John Tavares had broken in, anticipating a pass, and that whistles down the play. And a face-off coming back in the neutral zone. I like Morgan Riley in the power play. I don't know about you. John Klingberg got the op opportunity early in the year before injury shut his season down. Then Riley, then Timothy Lilligren got some reps. When Lilligren was out, Connor Timmons took over. Played in over the line. Here's Nylander trying to get it back to the blue line, but it's intercepted and shot down the ice by Tampa Bay. Well, Riley like, will go back. I, uh, I agree. The thing I like the most is Riley's speed to get back and negate any kind of shorthanded chance against. Matthews in across the line. Gets a return pass. Swinging it around the boards for Nylander. Nylander and Domi on the near wall trying to free it up. But it comes free and the Lightning are going to bounce it out at center ice. And the Leafs have not been able to get set up with the puck in the oh. offensive zone. First unit staying out there though. Here's Riley. Dropping for Domi. Domi with speed through center. Works to the line and uh, dropped the puck back. And Nylander was offside. So the Leafs, who were very impressive in the first two opportunities with the power play. This one with 50 seconds left in it. Not so much. Teams have really finally adapted, haven't they, to that drop pass? As you know, you've basically got one guy moving, maybe two, coming over the line. Everybody else is standing at the blue line waiting. So you try to build that human fence and force them to try to pass through the wickets. And there we saw it. Tampa was able to disrupt the Leafs' entry. Second unit on. McMahon coming into center ice to the line on the boards for Timmons. Back in for McMahon. Back of the net. Played then by Robertson, but it is going to be cleared off a stick and off the glass into the spectators. And so there'll be a face-off coming. We saw, I mean, very briefly on the first power play that the Leafs had, but now John Tavares back to centering the power play. And we'll see what changes there's going to be when Mitch Marner gets back. And... Hopefully Saturday for Marner. I think so. Timmons at the point. Off the face-off win. Now the Leafs for the first time have things set up. And now here's Nylander. And he lost the handle on it as it looked like he was coming out in front of the net. Then a pass is intercepted by Matt Dumba. And played out at center. And a bouncing puck is going to go to the goal where Wall will put the finishing touches on a stop. And four seconds left in this rather uneventful power play. 
that you'll take plus one on specialty teams, won't you, especially against Tampa. The Lightning, by the way, they came into this game having killed 19 of 19 in their previous seven. So maybe the Matthews power play goal was both teams do. A shot goes just wide of the leap goal. Far boards now for Braden Point. He'll send it around the wall to the near side. Top line out there for the Lightning to Point. Point with a shot. I don't think Wall has seen that yet. It went off a stick and up into the screen, and he was still staring out top of the circle where it deflected. Kind of looked like Helios Samsonov did on the Montour goal against Florida yep. a couple of nights ago. And that is one of the things where the game has really changed over the years. Goalies used to give their players hell for trying to get their stick in front of shots and trying to block it and get out of the way, let me see it. And now the game has changed where it's all this. Point on the wing and a shot blocked. The rebound is going to be swallowed up by Wall. Yeah, that guy that had the colorful uh, suits and whatnot on Saturday nights, he was a big-time proponent about not getting in the way. They said, let the goalie look at yeah. it. But, I mean, there were, there were some great examples where I agree with Don big time. And, by the way, miss him big time. We were talking about uh, Coach's Corner before the game up yep. in the group here. Yep. Now, the first intermissions uh, aren't quite as busy up in the front oh. box. Shoot cannons down here. Yeah. But a lot, of, a lot of players would do it on long shots. You know, where somebody's winding up from the point and no traffic in front and somebody tries to redirect it halfway. I'm still more of that belief, but puck on stick is the trend of the National Hockey League. Played into the corner. Labuchkin punches it up the wall, but it doesn't get back to the point. Now back in the net. Center in front of the goalie score. Braden Point. Set up by guess who from behind the net. Kucherov is going to get another assist. And Braden Point has given the Tampa Bay Lightning the lead again. David Kampf had Point originally. And then Kampf left the front of the net with Point to chase him behind. But Braden Point is so good. Like Austin Matthews, like the elite players of getting to open ice. We said Camp had him right off the draw. But big problem for the Leafs is TJ Brody went well up the left wing boards chasing the play. And Ilya Babushkin went in behind the net to try to get the puck. And no Leaf forward was able to read that. And Braden Point wide open in front of Joseph Wall. 43rd goal of the season for Point and his 83rd point. But Kucherov now with 129 points. And as far as any team is concerned, the difference between first and second is quite dramatic there. And when you're talking about most valuable player in the league, where would Tampa Bay be without Kucherov? Well, that's, that's the big issue, right? Oh, absolutely. Now they have to get into the postseason, you would think, in order to have that happen but we'll wait and see bet around the boards you know, of course that is not always the case and across the line pass into the corner knocked down on the play on the far side was Pontus Holmberg and the lightning start out with it long shoot in goes into the far corner Brody reverses the puck for Domi he finds Timmons Timmons gets it ahead at center Robertson will flip into the corner for Matthews. Matthews couldn't get it. Now almost stole it and does now to Domi. Domi in with a shot. Blocking save made by Bezalewski and Matthews. Rebound. Couldn't get beat him either. Timmons with a shot that's blocked. Pass into the corner for Matthews. Doesn't connect. He gets it back to the blue line to Brody. Brody off to the near side to Domi. Down into the slot area. Matthews. His shot went off a leg. Leafs pressing here. Here's Brody to Matthews, and that went off a skate just in front of the net. Timmons keeping it alive on the near boards. Timmons back to the blue line, to Domi coming back towards him. Domi at the point, off on the wing to Matthews, closing, and that went off Morgan Riley's stick and went wide. And the Lightning are going to clear it into the Toronto bench to ease the pressure. Well, I don't know if Matthews 
was going to be able to put that short side under the crossbar. But Morgan Riley hit with friendly fire as he was just about to cross the eye line of Vasilevsky. And that seemed to go right off the shaft to Morgan Riley's stick, didn't it? Yep. Leafs out shooting the Lightning now 15 to 9. But the Lightning lead 2 to 1. Centering pass went off the side of the net. And Tampa Bay with it in their own zone with a lead pass through center. Labushkin tying up his man. That's drawn a crowd on the far side. Tavares got it freed up for Riley. He quickly plays ahead. And McMahon will send it down into the Lightning zone. Here's Tavares stealing the puck and coming to the front of the net. Couldn't get a shot. Riley back into the slot now for Nylander. Nylander sifts to the right wing side. Sends it towards the net. That was deflected wide. Labushkin keeping it into Nylander. He stops on a dime to get some room. Works back into the corner. Still with it. Looking back towards the blue line. Off on the wing for Tavares. Tavares into the corner for Riley. Riley works back towards the point. Still with it. Nylander there. Riley with a shot. And that was stopped by Vasilevsky. And it is carried to center ice by Tyler Mott. Mott brings it into the leaf zone with a shot that's high over top of the goal. Leafs trying to counter here with numbers, but they're a tired group. Tavares waiting for teammates oh. to get on side. Just flipped it in over the line, but didn't get it very deep. Yeah, Leafs were actually done when Tampa was coming back into the Leafs zone. You can see Nylander and Tavares totally out of gas. Playing around back of the net. And here's Matthews with it again. A long lead pass just out of the reach of uh, Bertuzzi, who was breaking on the left wing. Down into the corner. And Kucherov couldn't find anyone. Now Hedman on the left wing. Plays to the right wing side. They chip it to the side of the goal. Broken up there by Toronto. But they can't get it past Braden Point. He makes a nifty move to get it out in front. Oh, and an open net. That was missed on the near side. On the far side by Darren Radish. He had crept in from the right point. Is that Kucherov again? Benoit carries into the corner and is going to flip it out into neutral ice. Hedman going back. Lightning trying to get a change going, and the Leafs are doing likewise. Two to one. Tampa Bay here in the second period. Here's Hedman. Long right wing pass. Paul in with a pass in front. Good back checking there and taking the man for McCabe. Brought on by Camp. He's going to slip it into the Tampa Bay zone. In goes Reeves and pulls over his man there with a hit. And it is cleared high to center ice. Speaking of hits, there were plenty in the opening minutes of the Ranger Devils game, weren't there? First two seconds. Yep. Here's Chaffee back to the point. A long shot is deflected off the blocker of uh, Wall. And it's going to find the screen and go out of play with 12.21 to play here in the second period. Tampa Bay is once more taking the lead. It's 2-1. to one. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. You've heard that sound before. A basketball going off the backboard and in. A bank shot. Well, that's actually the sound of a fan winning a Raptors jersey. That's the sound of a fan getting a signed Raptors basketball. And that's a fan scoring tickets to the NBA Finals. With the Tangerine Bank Shot Contest, every bank shot the Raptors score this season wins a fan a prize. Enter for a chance to win at tangerine.ca slash bank shot. Tangerine, that's forward banking. And now it's time for our Subaru weather report. So, Harold, what's it looking like? Jim, we can expect more thunderstorms as the evening approaches and then overnight... Oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, can I get uh, two number sixes with a side of curly fries? Hold the onions, please. Yeah. Uh, Harold, are you in the drive-thru right now? Jim, no one listens to this. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yep, great. Weather reports don't matter when you drive a Subaru. Visit your local Subaru dealer today and book a test drive during the all-weather drive event. Whatever the weather, CMC Markets is here to help. Planning for a rainy day? Enjoy $0 commission on U.S. and Canadian share CFDs. Riding out the storm? Get ahead of the curve with lightning-fast execution speeds. 
Blue skies ahead? Go with the trusted broker backed by over 30 years' experience. Switch to CMC Markets and join over 275,000 global traders. Learn more at cmcmarkets.ca. FX spreads apply. CFDs involve a high degree of risk. Member Canadian Investor Protection Fund. Umbrella not included. Lightning 2, the Maple Leafs 1. 1221 left to go here in the period. Second period. You know, Simone Benoit is third in the league in defensive zone hits. But he's played about 20 less games than Jeremy Loza of Nashville, who has 281. Brendan Dillon of Winnipeg, 191. And then Benoit at 174. And <laughs> when you think about uh, games why, played, yeah. why he was uh, rewarded, with a contract, well, that's one of the big reasons. Morgan Riley with a bank pass that goes off a skate. Brought on by Matthews. Matthews in, stops up, got the shot away. Hoping to kind of decoy Vasilevsky in that he was going to make a pass. But veteran netminder stayed on the angle and caught the puck and holds for a faceoff. Yeah, we really haven't overly tested him 16 shots to this point Maybe his best save was off Austin Matthews of the first period from point blank by the way Kucherov with the two points have a as a career high now he's had a marvelous season and McKinnon McDavid Matthews here's a pass in front for Stamkos and that was stopped by Wall Puck in front of the net again, trying to center for Stamkos. Poked ahead, and Domi will skate it out at center. He's going to flip it in and go roaring in there after it, trying to negate an icing, and does. Got a hit in as well, and comes away with the puck. Oh, he centered it in front, but just out of the reach of Austin Matthews. Play it around back of the net. It'll go to Bertuzzi on the far side, who left it there for Benoit. Benoit back of the net for Domi. Domi double teamed back of the goal, waiting for support to arrive. Pontus Holmberg got it in front, and it was knocked away before Domi could get a stick on it. Lightning bring it in over the line with Stamkos on a two on one, and a shot scores! Unionville native Steven Stamkos opens up a 3 1 lead on a two on one that he used his line mate as a decoy. Jake McCabe stood up and made a hit at the red line. And it was great, except that it was on a three-on-two. So you eliminate both of them, and there's a two-on-one coming in. Stamkos, I think, looking shot all the way, and he had a great opportunity before that where the Leafs had horrible coverage in front of the net. And that's the one thing you could say in the last couple of Leaf goals is the defensive coverage is... I mean, it's just been gift-wrapping opportunities. And you can't do it against the likes of Kucherov, Stamkos, or Braden Point. And maybe this, we mentioned the Leafs were down 3-1 and 4-1 to Tampa in two previous games this year. Came back in a playoff game. You remember they were down in the third period by three. Ryan O'Reilly tied it late. Leafs won it in overtime. Maybe this was part of the game plan. Maybe. Got to get down a couple. Well, if it is, they have. Oh, that's a trip. Yeah, and there was no none called. The Leafs got away with one there. Here's McMahon. In across the line, dropping for Nylander. Nylander circles, double teamed there and taken to the boards by Duclair. It'll go around back of the net, fed up on the wing by Radish, but the Leafs are there and Benoit holding it back to the blue line. McCabe with a one-timer. And Nylander didn't really take the eyes away from uh, Vasilevsky, and he was able to catch that. Although Nylander was uh, in the vicinity, he needed to get over a little further. Well, the good news, Joel Edmondson skating. And again, where it's going to be interesting to see what defensemen make the final cut for game one of the playoffs. And, and, that, and who's, the one who's coming out? When Marner and uh, uh, well, Yarncrook, yeah. if they're healthy. Well, I mean, on the defensive side, the more breakdowns you see defensively, like we've seen tonight, seriously going to play into 
who's going to be in and out, who can be trusted. Yep. Here's Robertson working in with a shot. That deflected just wide of the Tampa Bay goal. It bounces out in front of the net. Holmberg was able to knock it back, but couldn't get it into the zone. And now McCabe will find his defense partner, and Benoit plays it ahead. Leafs with a two-on-two rush, and here's Nyes. In across the line, back to Robertson. Robertson into the corner, was knocked down on the play. Nyes bodies his man. Puck still free, and now the Lightning will get it back of the net for Matt Dumba. Dumba sending it high into neutral ice off a stick. Leafs are able to come away with it. Timmons had to go off his skate and out at center, but quickly shot back into the Toronto zone. Lightning three, the Leafs one. Two unanswered goals from Tampa here in the second period. Played on the backhand by Dewar into the zone. Camp gets in there. Dewar is able to free it up for Timmons, who tried to send it to the net. That was stopped back in behind the net for David Camp. Camp to the far corner. Lays it back for Reeves. Reeves trying to elude a man. Got it freed up for Dewar. Back to the point to uh, Timmons. Shot coming. Pad save made by Vasilevsky. Good shift here for the fourth line, but it's played past Timmons and comes to center ice. He's going to flip it high to the line. And then Reeves was cut down by Luke Glendening. And that was a dangerous hit. And Reeves has not back up onto his skates yet. That was knee on knee, wasn't it? It sure was. That's a two-minute minor for tripping. <laughs> It's a tripping call. Reeves seems to be all right. But the Leafs go to their fourth power play when we return. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. trip go because Reeves couldn't do anything with the puck it would have been offside had he brought it across the blue line which he was in the process of doing when Glendening tripped him but they decided not to let it go and that was as much of a trip as the one at Duclair that they decided not to call that was in the Lightning's offensive zone so a tough sequence for Tampa Bay 3-1 they lead Massey Services penalty kill number four already in the game again they're without Glendening who was in the box when the Leafs scored on the power play late first. Tavares and Paul on the right of Vasilevsky. Paul on his weak side. He does win it. He kicks it to the far corner, Chernak. A little pass off Chernak's stick. The Leafs hold it in Matthews at the right point. How to buy Bot. Matthews stays with it at the right point. Pass deflects in front. Chernak had it, lost it, fumble and he couldn't get it out. Lighting twice at the puck, twice didn't get it out. Here's Nylander left circle. Nylander holds. Left corner, Max Domi. Back to Nylander, left circle. Center point, Morgan Riley. Shoot, save Vasilevsky with the glove, and he holds on through a Domi screen. One big part of penalty killing, when you have the puck on your stick in the defensive zone, you have to get it down the ice. And twice the Lightning had it, including off the faceoff win by Paul, and couldn't execute the clear. Tavares and Paul to the right of Vasilevsky, 130 in the power play. Again, one by the Lightning. Hedman slides from out. Nicely done in the near corner, and this is a clear. Down the ice, it goes. Leafs move left to right in the second. Morgan Riley winds up. Slides to center ice. Drop pass, Austin Matthews. Riley Nylander. Turns it across the blind. Domi right there. Pins it by the Lightning net. Dumble looks to play it out. Blocking it, though. Tavares left circle. Center point, Morgan Riley. Riley holds. Riley. He's at left circle Matthews. Pass comes to Nylander left point. Left circle Matthews holds. High slot beat Tavares. Save made by Vasilevsky. That was a low slot actually. Puck grabbed by Nylander. Left circle centering feet skips through. Is this puck going to get out? Yes. He was trying for a shot pass right there on a tip. And it missed. Back at center ice Riley. Bangs it in and chases. Riley's after it left circle. He's bumped by Dumba. Where's that puck? Rolls to Matthews left circle. Cross ace feet deflects to Max Domi right point. Right point, Nylander shoots, tip wide left by Tyler Bertuzzi, it deflects out of play. 
couple of dangerous passes to the net there for the Leafs. And Vasilevsky made a big time stop on Tavares right at the hash marks. 27 seconds left in the power play. 3 1 Lightning with 7.25 remaining. In the second period. Now this face off is on the other 27 side of the ice. seconds so to go in this power play. Holmberg out with Robertson and Bertuzzi. It's 27 seconds in the power play. The Leafs control the face off. McCabe to Nick Robertson. Robertson curls, gets it back to McCabe and a shot. That was blocked in front of the goal. Puck comes back into the near corner with a big scrum there. The Timmons trying to maintain possession. They do. Back to the point it goes to McCabe. McCabe to Timmons. A wrist shot is deflecting off the stick of Nicholas Paul up into the screen out of play. We should run the stats on the Leafs record and the power play that goes beyond three seconds because... <laughs> Matthews scored three seconds into the first power play of the night, but everything since has really looked like the old ones, haven't they? Trouble getting into the zone on the entry. Trouble setting up. Trouble winning face-offs. Let's not forget, Leafs aren't out of the woods as far as the wild card spots yet. You know, with the two games left against Tampa. A win tonight would assure them of a postseason berth. Detroit is uh, idle. Puck along the boards, back of the Tampa Bay goal. The scrum continues. And you're going to hear the hacking and whacking as the puck comes back into the slot for Robertson. And he got that quick wrister away, and Vasilevsky was equal to the case. The Leafs get it ahead, and now backhanded right back into the zone. Vasilevsky will play it away from Robertson's forecheck. And the Lightning will get it to the line, but uh, Sorelli having difficulty getting out, but Brandon Hagel helps him out and gets to center and shoots it in to get a much-needed change for John Cooper's team. They lead 3-1 to one on the Maple Leafs here. In over the line on the left wing side for Camp, and as he got the shot away, it too was off a stick and up into the screen. Well, that was 6 a, 3 to play in the period. A pretty good slash that Camp took too, didn't he? Coming across the line. The Leafs out shooting the Lightning 23 to 11, but continue the trail 3 to 1. Joseph Wall isn't quite back yet, is he? And you know, when you talk to the Tampa people, now Andre Vasilevsky had back surgery. It's taken him until the last month or so to get back into form. I said the, league, the team wasn't playing as well. I mean, Mikhail Sergachev's, in, uh, Sergachev's injury certainly disrupts the strength of the Tampa Bay Lightning blue line. Loose puck at the side of the goal. Some broken sticks there as it comes to the side of the net. Tavares trying to take advantage. So is Nylander. But the Lightning are going to be able to poke it out at center. And it is Flurry going to get a new stick. Point. Sends it in for Kucherov, who gets it around back of the net, but Declare couldn't come up with it. Anthony Declare has been a nice addition. Put on this line with Point. As the puck comes up free in front of the net. Oh, and a great save made by Vesilevsky on a steal by Bobby McMahon. Well, McMahon did a great job stripping the puck off of Matt Dumba and took it right to the net, but probably got it a little too tight to Vasilevsky when he... 10, 10, 50 in the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Alpine News Network is here live with one of our superheroes. I just helped Tom with a business loan. He needed to soup up his mechanic shop. Not to brag, but I once modified a car to match my ultra speed. It went so fast, it broke the speed of sound. Approved. At least no one was inside. I hope no one was inside. I guess I'll just stick to approving business loans. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Just for license 12616. Hello, people of the GTA. Patio season is around the corner. But why wait for packed parks and King Street when you can head to Canada's favorite paradise, Cuba, for less? Book early with Sunwing and kick back in Holguin or Cayo Santa Maria, where the mojitos are always fresh. When you save more, you can do more. Book with your local travel agent or at... 
Did you fix that leaky tap? Uh-huh. How about that loose doorknob? Uh-huh. Right now, we can get a free medium pizza from Two for One Pizza. Did somebody say free pizza? See, it's not just the kids that have selective hearing. Right now, get a free medium one-topping pizza with a minimum $25 purchase before tax and delivery. Limited time offer. Online orders only. Visit twoforonepizza.com and use coupon code FREEM. Faceoff coming in the Tampa Bay zone. You know, I was really saddened to hear that financial difficulties out in St. John's, Newfoundland has uh, prompted the East Coast Hockey League to suspend play for the Newfoundland Growlers. They couldn't find a new owner. It's such a difficult situation because they have to pay as Domi gets a shot away that's blocked in front of the net. Got another one whacked away. They have to help pay the cost of teams coming, in. coming to Newfoundland. And, I mean, just some such great hockey fans out there. And the greatest people. We can oh, put it on top that, of that. Put that right there, absolutely. As uh, the Lightning push the puck ahead, and Mott will play it into the zone. And, of course, one of their players that was there, big save there by the Leafs as it comes free and Domi trying to poke it out to the line does get it to center and then a pass up on the right side and Matthews is in with a shot but it went off a stick and went deflecting wide as Head Headman got a piece of it Bobby yeah. McMahon played some games out in St. John's and has uh, been rewarded with a contract here again this year four and a half minutes to play in the period Puck along the boards in the lead zone. Tavares kicked it free. Riley gets it back to him. And now Tavares trying to make an outlet pass. Had it hit a leg. Matthews carries on and is going to roll it into the zone. Leafs are changing on the go. Lightning lead it by two. Here's an intercept by McMahon. Tried to center for Nylander and that didn't work. Kept in by McKay, but the Lightning will pounce it and get it out at center. Leafs restore, and back in comes Nylander for Tavares. Back for Nylander, trying to kick it into the slot. It goes back of the net. Tavares wrapping it out in front. McMahon, if he'd have had his stick on the ice, he might have scored. Note to all of you minor hockey players. They're in front of the net. Keep the stick on the ice. Off the glass and played high to center ice by McMahon. Holmberg couldn't get in over the line. And it's up on the wing, and Timmons sends it in. Nyes and Robertson over the boards with Pontus Holmberg. 3.20 to play in the period. Lifted into the Toronto zone by Loberg. Around the boards to the near side, and Timmons outlets it ahead, and Brody will look ahead at center to get it to Pontus Holmberg. And Nyes... He was loading up a shot, took a look into the corner to see where Holmberg went. The puck rolled right off his stick. Lightning get it back to the late blue line. Timmons able to get it out at center, but out of the reach of Robertson. And the Lightning will flip it back into the Toronto end. Timmons back up on the boards. Nyes pushes it up. And Holmberg will get to the red line and shoot it in. And changes coming for Toronto. Lightning three, the Leafs one. A pass in across the line, oh. and Anthony DeClaire was 30 feet, 40 feet offside. And he's talking to the linesman, and you're kind of saying, I think they might have got this one right. Yeah, you might have got this one right. I, I was a tad bit offside, I think. Two, two thirty-three to go here. And again with Kucherov, as we mentioned, the two points gives him a career high. In points on the season, I think he's just one off a career high in goals for Kucherov. Talented, talented player. Here's Duclair centering it. Fred on wall makes the save of the game for him. Coming across to keep it at 3-1. Point was on the right wing side and Wall had to push hard. To get over there to get that left pad in front of the goal, in front of the net. Well, off the face off, Ilya Labushkin jumped up and tried to poke the puck up ice, but instead it was picked off, and then Riley had to come over to try to cover for Labushkin, and that left point wide open, going to the far side. 
Draw control by Tampa Bay. A shot by Radish was deflected wide. 2.18 to go in the period, and Domi's away. In over the line with Bertuzzi, and his pass for him didn't connect. But Matthews comes away with it in front. Oh, and at the other end, robbery there by Vasilevsky on a similar save that Wall just made. Centering pass by Matthews doesn't connect. Domi with a pass in front. Matthews can't get it. And the Lightning will break it out at center ice. Duclair unable to get around Benoit. Benoit takes them into the corner. They get shoving with one another. And both are going to go to the penalty box. Well, what a save by Vasilevsky. What a save and by Wall. <laughs> but they were there, there, similar, weren't they? Well, there was a little more on the on the uh, the pass from the boards rough, by Matthews. Number two's got a minor for a slash. That's uh, that seems fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> slash and a rough. But what hurts Bertuzzi on this, Joe, is not being a right-handed shot. He's off the post to the left of Vasilevsky. Right-handed shot. You can take it in any. He's had to try to manipulate his stick to get it on an angle to redirect it. But it was a rifle of a pass from the left wing boards to the far post from Matthews to Bertuzzi. I think that's why I just grade that a little bit higher, just the yep. speed of yeah, you're right. which Vasilevsky had to go from his right to left. That's why you're the analyst. I just do the play-by-play. -play. You have to figure out what happens. There's Tavares in with a shot that goes off a stick and goes up well, into the screen. Can I, uh, can I get that in writing? No. 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 <laughs> it, it's out there for the end of time. It'll just sift around no, in the no, air. No, you know? I, want, I want her to find roles broken oh. down by you. <laughs> <laughs> I just fill in when you stop. That's how it works. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> in all these years, I thought it was the other way around. <laughs> and across the line. Sorelli in the front of the net and wall again. Coming across to make an excellent save on Hayden Flurry. There's been a couple of moments for Joe Wall before this where, as we discussed, wasn't quite as sharp as we saw him. Well, obviously, before the injury. A high ankle sprain. But boy, he's made back to back saves going post to post. To keep and, it at two. And, and I got to tell you, I mean, you will be a little bit concerned. I realize Tampa is so good offensively, but the Leafs are giving up way too many chances off the rush. It's already Great. burned them on the stamp. The stamp goes two on one. Leafs win the face off. McCabe drops it back for Brody. Brody looking for Matthews, finds him on the right wing. He has one in the books tonight, number 63. Drops for Nylander, closing in. Shot is deflected wide. Brody's able to keep it alive on the far side for Nylander, but he had it off a skate. And Tampa Bay, with a minute to go in the period, will bring it out. Hagel, just circling back to allow teammates to change, will find Victor Hedman. Hedman dropping it back in his own zone. Leaf fans giving Hedman the business a little bit here. Pass goes over on the right wing side for Kucherov. Back to Hedman. Hedman gains the zone. Looks for Kucherov with a pass. And a good defensive play made there by the Maple Leafs' Jake McCabe. And this allows Brody to get it ahead. And across the line, Matthews tried to curl and drag and then shoot. But it went off a stick and up into the screen. And now we've got a bunch of players gathered in the far corner with... Brody in there with one of the Lightning players. Nothing more developing. Faceoff coming in the Tampa Bay zone. 23.1 second remaining in the period. It was Darren Radis that for some reason seemed to take exception to TJ Brody. As Edmund and Matthews chatting after the whistle. Faceoff will be down to the left of Andre Vasilevsky. 23.1 seconds to go. And four on four hockey here. And Domi and Bertuzzi out for the Leafs. Draw to the left. And the draw won by Sorelli of the Lightning. And breaking out with it now is Hagel. 
He hits the Toronto line, dropping for Sorelli, who turned the puck over. Bertuzzi and Domi breaking on the left wing, but they got kind of tangled up there. Now brought in by Bertuzzi. Drops for Riley. They're going to have to hurry, and they won't be able to hurry quick enough. The horn will end the period. So Tampa Bay has a good second period as they uh, tally twice, point and stamp coast, and lead it 3-1. to one. And both goaltenders coming up with big stops. Joseph Wall with two huge ones. Similar plays having to go right to left to keep this at 3-1. And the Leafs, how many chances they give up off the rush? Four or five in the second period alone. Yep. And that's something that needs to be tidied up because we've seen a little too much of that of late. 14-9. to The Leafs out shoot the lightning in the period. 25-13 over 40 minutes as we'll step aside for our second period intermission. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Hear the Masters exclusively on Sirius XM. Hi, this is Mike Tirico, and there's nothing like the, the Masters. Masters. Rory McIlroy, he's thinking Grand Slam! The beauty of the Azaleas, the passion of the Patriots, and the best golfers in the world vying for a green jacket. They turn right into the cup for John Rahm. It all makes for one of the most iconic weekends in sports. Join me for live coverage of the Masters beginning Thursday, April 11th on Masters Radio Channel 92 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. NHL Morning Skate. The general manager of the Vegas Golden Knights, Kelly McCrimmon. Vegas so quickly has become a place where players want to go. Players appreciate that we're trying to win, and uh, I think we've come to expect it. It's their livelihood and all of those things that go with it. So we try to do uh, what we can to, to help that happen. NHL Morning Skate with Scott Lachlan and Gord Stone. Weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The points with Boomer Gordon. Andrew Burnett is your Jack Adams winner. Oh. 70 points in 52 games. You project that over 82, Jake. That's an 111 point pace. So they've gone head to head with the big boys of the West all year. Andrew Burnett inherited a new GM in Barry Trotz and a sinking payroll. And he's got this points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91, and the Sirius XM app. Hockey 24 7 on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. This is the NHL. These are pros. You don't want guys to put good power play units on, don't take penalties. You don't want good power play units to score goals when you've given up a whole bunch, kill them. You don't like it, do something about it. If you want to reward your guys who had a good game with a chance to get some more goals and points, do it. If I was a coach, I wouldn't care. Who cares? Worry about your own team, don't worry about mine. Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91. And on your schedule with the Sirius XM app. NHL Morning Skate. Andrew Burnett, head coach of the National Predators. I think Roman Yossi gets underrated nowadays. I think maybe the consistency that he does it every year, um, you take it for granted a little bit. I mean, he's done everything in this game. His ability to raise his game is, is very unique. You know, I've been around some really good, great defensemen. Uh, he, he's right up there with them, and, and he does get over them. NHL Morning Skate with Scott Lachlan and Gord Stellar. Weekdays, 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Hey Toronto, I'm David Morissuti, host of the daily Toronto Me Please podcast, Locked On Lease, part of the Locked On Podcast Network on the Sirius XM app. Every weekday, we bring you the latest Leafs news and analysis, break down all the action, including this game you're listening to right now, and preview the next one. We're giving you everything a Leafs fan could want, all in a daily 30-minute podcast. Download Locked On Leafs right now on the Sirius XM app, available with all trials and popular plans, or you get your podcast, search Locked On. There is no competition in soccer quite like the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XM FC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jim Bellingham's driving, driving scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage and all the top matches are on Sirius XM FM app. Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey is on. TSN 1050 and the Leafs Radio Network. The Leafs live here. 
And it is 3-1 for Tampa over the Leafs after 40 minutes of play. TSN after 40 is delivered by 241 Pizza. Get a free medium one-topping pizza with a $25 minimum purchase before tax and delivery. Online orders only. Visit 241pizza.com. Use the code FREEM for that free medium. That was not a deluxe period by the Leafs, was it? No. Too many odd man rushes. Yeah. Poor defensive zone coverage um, on one of the goals. Yeah. I, I, I think Joe Wall has to stop one of those, probably the third one. Uh, to yeah, me. That's, a, that's a shot. Right. Yeah. That, that's one he's got to get in better position for. Um, yeah, I think but Stamkos decoyed him on that. A little bit, yeah. but, you know, he's close enough still that he can make himself bigger. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I didn't love the defensive zone coverage on the goals against either. No. Um, you I'm, know, I'm not overly thrilled with how they played in their own zone. I think uh, even when Tampa wasn't getting shots, they had position on the Leafs, which I don't, uh, you know, you can't do that. Um uh, what bothered me was, so the Leafs start that period, they just come off, they obviously scored with a minute to go in period one, they start the period 23 seconds in, Hagel goes off for tripping, um, and when that penalty expires, it's 2.23, uh, the goal goes in at 2.54 by point, I look up at the clock, and in three minutes while killing a penalty, they have five shots on goal. Yeah, like, I, I think especially late in the period, they were getting their chances, right? They're out shooting Tampa 25 to 14 right now. Um, and, like, the chances are there, but it's it's just they're playing their own zone. It, it, a little bit sloppy. I, I think the, the best way to sum it up is both teams have had other opportunities, and they sort of canceled each other out. I suspect we're going to see a real pushback from the Leafs here in the third period because they just haven't come out firing yet no um and you know it's it's strange as well because this is we're getting closer to the the preferred top six that you want to see in the postseason right and you would think you're, you're getting morgan riley back i know you know he's not known as a defense first defenseman but you would think you get a player like him back you get a little closer to the the defensive zone coverage you want to have? Yeah, I just think that this is the, the problem that they're going to face as they bring people back in, and I think Coach Keefe alluded to that earlier today. The guy is back, but it takes some time for everything to fit around him, for him to get his, his game game speed up, and, I mean, this is an adjustment period. I mean, you said it as well. How much time do you really have here? Well, well, yeah, you've got a week. Well, you've got two weeks. Well, Joel Edmondson probably won't be back for Saturday. Um, so now you're looking at, at five games for him to get back. And he's a huge part. He's such a critical well, part of this team already. Oh, well, you could plug him into this game, and I think you'd see a difference. For sure. Right? You need someone. You literally need someone to stand in front of the net a little bit more. That's that's what's been missing this period. Absolutely. Um, so that goes to what I said about Tampa having position in the offensive zone. If he's down there, they're not going to have that. I mean, t- Tampa's a great team. Like well, they, yeah. You know, it's... it's it, but, Again, we're watching Nikita Kucherov have, you know, well, one of his best seasons ever. And, and Vasilevsky is uh, in form tonight. I mean, the, the point of it is is that uh, you're always, from here on in, count on playing a good team. And and when you get into yeah, the playoffs, yep. count on playing a good team that's fighting for their lives like you are. Part of me is looking at this period and looking at this game and wondering if now is the time. To, and I'm, I don't know necessarily if things would have been different, and I keep coming back to them, but... Part of me is wondering if from here on in you just you roll with Samsonov. I wonder if the decision is I know he Sheldon Keefe said he wanted to go 50-50 the rest of the way, and that does allow Elias Samsonov a bit of rest. Yeah. He's, he's just playing so much better than Joseph Wall right now. Well he is. Uh, having said that, they have one goal that's on a power play. Five on five, not yep. so good, right? Yep. So that I mean that's not on the goalie. Uh, it wasn't on the goalie that uh, McCabe stepped up in the neutral zone and tried to deliver a hit. And Stamkos went around him and went in and scored. Uh, the other goal was a throw in behind the net. The, the Bushkin got schooled on and out front, point standing there, boom, in the net. Not really on the goalie. Sure, but you're also talking about how we need to get to or how the Leafs need to get to a place where uh, they're ready to go, right? You're, you're not one for, for rest. Now may, might be the time to just get your, your goaltender as sharp as possible and give him the confidence too, right? I, I would just suggest to you that however you get there, and <laughs> you're only going to know it if you don't, yeah. you, just, you can't have a game like this where you're giving opportunities away. You've got to sure. be airtight. Yeah. Airtight defensively. Yeah, and, and I also think, you, you know what, you're right. This is not necessarily all on Joseph Wall. I think I, I, 
I would almost guarantee having listened to him hundreds of times this season. Um, and I, I, you know, I'll bet on it. It's one of the first things Sheldon Keith brings up post game yeah. is we were not in the right spots defensively, right? We didn't necessarily give Joseph Wall the best chance to succeed. Uh, the second goal, especially, really poor defensive zone coverage. Yeah. And that kind of stuff will sink you. The second goal they got outsmarted on. Kucherov, or sorry, uh, the Bush could play the man, Kucherov played the puck. Where was TJ Brody? Nowhere to be seen. Right, <laughs> right guy. <laughs> well, point was right in the crease, at the top of the crease. Yeah, you could almost point to, like, a number of different players there. You know, Ryan Reeves as well, and say, like... It's who, just, who's it, got the guy? It just wasn't a good setup. And, and that, but, of course, that happens right after you have a power play. And uh, the power play wasn't that great either, was it? Uh, no. I mean, but, again, that they had one in the first period is, is something to build on. Um, look, I, I, I suspect they'll, they'll come out uh, a lot better in the third period. Um, again, it's, it's so tough at this point in the season because guys – Bodies are feeling it. I know you're not one for rest, but... Well, you know. I just don't think you can dwell on any one thing. It, it, instead of wondering what happened, come up with a solution and and, and solve it and go forward. You, you really can't say, well, we, we we did this in the second period. Third period's there, opportunity knocks. Get three goals. Yeah, and, and I think the, this is a great opportunity for some players that have gone a little bit quiet lately to, to have their moments as well. Uh, we'll see. Big third coming up. Yes, we will see. We will. 3-1 tap over the Leafs after 40 minutes of play. This is Bulls and Canadian Leafs Hockey on TSN 1050, the iHeart Radio app, and the Leafs Radio Network. And now it's time for our Subaru weather report. So, Harold, what's it looking like? Jim, it's a lovely spring day here on the beach. I came here for some solo time, like I do, but I got hungry instantly, so I went to Bob's Boardwalk Beaster when Bob says, Sorry, cash only. Luckily for me, I always have a $5 bill stashed in my sandals, so I give it to Bob, and he says, We don't accept foot money here. That's Thanks, how he Harold. talks. But Weather now I'm reports starving, don't matter when you drive a Subaru. Get... Visit your local Subaru dealer today and book a test drive during the all-weather drive event. Breaking story from Alpine News Network. Ron is a teacher helping bright minds, but this time he needed help. Alpine credits and a cosmic superhero with a debt consolidation loan. She conjured a magic book, Debt Consolidation 101. Lesson 1, consolidate debt into one low monthly payment. Lesson 2, nothing. It's a short book. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine credits can help. Alpine credits, where homeowners get approved. Just for license 12616. From the biggest stadiums... To the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuss shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age. Do you love deli meat but are careful about your sodium intake? Try new Schneider's Deli Meat with the delicious taste you've come to expect from Schneider's. Now with 25% less sodium than regular deli meats. They're crafted in Canada using only Schneider's premium cuts of meat. And they're an excellent source of protein. Try all five new deli meats including smoked black forest ham and herb turkey from Schneider's. Trusted by Canadians for over 130 years. Brand power helping you buy better. Hello, people of the GTA. Patio season is around the corner, but why wait for packed parks and King Street when you can head to Canada's favorite paradise, Cuba, for less? Book early with Sunwing and kick back in Holguin or Cayo Santa Maria, where the mojitos are always fresh. When you save more, you can do more. Book with your local travel agent or at... Thinking about starting insulin? You might be. Traceba is the number one prescribed long-acting insulin by endocrinologists in Canada. Its flexible dosing means you can take once daily Traceba at whatever time works best for you. With at least eight hours between doses, even right after you test your morning blood sugar. Talk to your doctor today to see if Traceba is right for you. And visit nowready.ca. 
Out of Town Scoreboard is brought to you by Maple Toyota. Build your next dream Toyota at Maple Toyota. Check out Maple Toyota's pre-owned inventory. It's arriving daily, and it's time to Toyota. Visit mapletoyota.com. At Madison Square Garden in New York City, after 40 minutes of play, Devils 3-2 over the Rangers. The game started with a line brawl. Eight players got booted out of the game two seconds in. The rest are battling through a close hockey game. Later on at 9.30 tonight, Edmonton in Dallas, also at 9.30. Seattle in L.A. against the Kings. And at 10, it'll be the Canucks visiting the Coyotes. In our game, it's 3-1 for Tampa over the Leafs after 40 minutes of play. This is Bulls and Canadian Leafs Hockey on TSN 1050, the iHeartRadio app and the Leafs Radio Network. The Rock returns to the ring for WrestleMania 40, and Sirius XM's Busted Open is there to preview it all. Beginning tomorrow, Dave LaGreca, Tommy Dreamer, and our Hall of Famers Bully Ray and Mark Henry are in Philadelphia, breaking down all the angles. I'm acknowledging Roman Reigns. That is our tribal chief. I am acknowledging this historic day, as you should too, Dave. It's Busted Open, mornings at 9 Eastern on Sirius XM Fight Nation. Channel 156 on your radio, or listen anytime on the all-new Sirius XM app. The Point with Boomer Gordon. Andrew Burnett is your Jack Adams winner. Oh. 70 points in 52 games. You project that over 82, Jake. That's an 111-point pace. So they've gone head-to-head with the big boys of the West all year. Andrew Burnett inherited a new GM in Barry Trotz and a sinking payroll. And he's got this team playing as well as any team in the NHL. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. There is no competition in soccer quite like the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XM FC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jude Bellingham's driving, driving scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage and all the top matches are on Sirius XM FC 157 and the all-new Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. Serrano, yeah, they don't have a face card. Like, they don't have an ace. Morgan's a jack. They have so many non-face cards that these guys are going to have to bullpen by committee. Because the real truth is this. They got a good forward group. But if you don't defend against Boston and Florida, you're not seeing Boston or Florida in round two. That's the exam, and the test will be on this defense. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern. On NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Join me, Ward Stellick, and Scott Laughlin as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Day morning, 6 till 10 on TSN 1050. You ain't first, you're last. Leafs down a pair to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Joe Bowen apparently working solo for the next little while. You know, he's out shaking hands, kissing babies, just working the crowd, aren't you? Maybe turn on your mic. <laughs> it's not Lucas' fault. Well, sometimes you go to work and it's on. Yeah. Sometimes we go to work and it's not. Well, it'd be nice if we had some consistency. It was just uh, signing some autographs. How is that going? Really tough to get people to stop. <laughs> But I got one guy. <laughs> yeah, but nine out of ten times you misspell. <laughs> but uh, Matthew's jersey may not be worth what it was when he walked in. <laughs> Do you know how much those things are? Yeah. And you just ruined it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love when you go somewhere. But you know, I like the way you put "I know him" and then sign your name. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. The, you know, it's bad when you go to something and they ask you to sign the inside of the jersey. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All the players are autographing the jersey, and that, you know, just inside just inside here. Inside here, yeah, yeah, right at the bottom, or no one will see it. Leads to the right. Tampa Bay to the left as they bring it in on the left wing. And Tavares with a shot from an angle that uh, Vasilevsky is able to handle. Vasilevsky's looked good, play. hasn't he? Yes, he has. Yep. Well, he made save two real good yep. saves. And the one on Bertuzzi was in particular. 
And the one on Austin Matthews in the first period from yeah. the top of the crease. Hey, tonight, I believe, is the last game that Taylor is working down here uh, to our left in the game obstacle. Yes. She is very much with child, uh, having a baby girl. And her and her husband, Josh, we want to wish all of the very best as they start a new family. There's Duclair getting it in over the line. Stamp coast a shot. There's a big rebound in front. Knocked away, and now McMahon will start out at center ice. Tries to chip it into the right wing corner. Going to get in there on the forecheck with Chernick. They drag it in along the boards, but it's dug out by Fleury, and Hayden Fleury comes to center. Left wing side, and trying to close the gap over there with a hit was McCabe, and that stopped the rush. Leafs back in their own zone. Down a pair here in the third. McCabe up ahead for Brody. Leafs have outshot Tampa Bay 26-14 and are going to have to have a big third period here as Hedman starts away at center and across the Leaf blue line. Over on the right wing side. Centering pass by Point was blocked and now Domi nicely receives the pass and is able to carry down on the right wing. Max goes into the corner, tried to slip it in front, had it hit the side of the goal. The puck comes along the boards and it is uh, grabbed off there by Hedman and it's going to be brought out into the center ice area and down into the leaf end. Got a photographer down here standing up. Can't see the end of the corner. I'm going to have oh. to throw something at it. It's usually down my way. Oh. Face off in the Toronto zone to the right. And it'll be Pontus Holmberg trying to lean in there, but uh, he gets waved out, and Robertson will move in. The draw is one into the along the boards. Played up and out and down the ice right on goal. Handled by Wall and he will take it aside and now start out with it. With a pass up ahead for Dome or for uh, Riley who will shoot it in. Around on the far boards it goes. Trying to chip it in front of the net. It goes back to the goal. Nice. Unable to connect there with Robertson. And they're back in along the boards, but Nice couldn't come up with it, and it's cleared out into the center ice area. Riley playing it ahead to the line, and uh, Pontus Holmberg couldn't help him out, and Tampa Bay shoots it right back in again. A pass up on the wing for Robertson. He got it out of the zone, but it's quickly shot right back in again by the Lightning, and it comes all the way around the boards on the near side, and Morgan Riley couldn't catch up to it. Tampa Bay back in their own zone. Got it up on the far side. Well, Reeves was just waiting. Now a turnover and a shot stopped there by Wall on the short side. Puck goes to Reeves. He leaves for Camp. Camp skates it out with a pass up to Ryan Reeves on the wing. Into the slot area and a pass into the corner was out of the reach of Timmons. Back in along the boards it goes. Lightning trying to center and get free of it, and they do, and they're going to skate it out into neutral ice, playing it in over the line for Glenn Denning, and now we've got a fight going to be starting here. It is uh, Tanner Janot and Reeves eyeing each other in the center ice circle, and now they grab a hold of a jersey, and Reeves throws the first punch. Janot went down to a knee, but is back up. They're back at arm's length again. Now another right hand by Reeves. He straightens Janot with the left to keep him at bay. Threw an overhand right. Whoa, and then Janot rocked Reeves with a punch that knocked his helmet off. Then they're throwing some good haymakers at one another here. Reeves tags him, and down goes Janot. That's a heavyweight belt. As Janot seemed to take the last punch in the right jaw. Easy call by the officials. Give them both a lot of credit. This is a tough, tough way to make a living. 3-10 the time of the penalties. 
Reeves and Janot. And I think Jean and Janot was the one I think that really was the one that wanted to instigate it. And Ryan Reeves did not turn down the invitation. Well, we were talking about the opening moments of the game at Madison Square Garden yeah. in New York, right? Boy, does he catch him. Yeah, he little, caught him just little, off the right little, side yeah. of the face. Hey? Well, yeah. and it started with the left jab and followed it with the haymaker right. And what you worry about there is, you know, whether it's con concussion protocol, and I don't know if John Cooper is talking to the officials about that now. But you worry a little bit. For Janot, that now the he's line's been okay. gone over, and I think you might be right. They, well, or are they? Janot is still sitting in the penalty box. Now they're closing the door, so it may have been. How you feeling? Good, great. All right, press yeah. on. Is that the new protocol? That's the new protocol. <laughs> That's the old protocol. That's the old protocol. Do you remember your name, uh, Muhammad Ali? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <Well>. close enough. <laughs> Yeah, things thankfully have changed no over the kidding. years. Dumba sending the puck into the slot area. It was knocked up on the wing, and it is Bertuzzi getting to Riley to Domi. Domi shoots it in, took a hit there from Lilberg, and it's around back into the Tampa Bay zone. Cleared out at center. Leafs are going to get to the loose puck. Riley regrouping with Labushkin. Up ahead for Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi. Knocked down on the play, but it is played into the corner, and now Riley finds Domi on the left wing. Domi coming to center. Lays it into the near corner. Puck goes around the boards and played up to the line, and it gets by everybody, and Kucherov is in. A huge pad save made by Joseph Wall, who stops play. Well, it's been a tough night in a lot of ways for Jake McCabe. He was the one that tried to trap it inside the Tampa line. And must have known that Kucherov was behind him. He couldn't do it and Kucherov takes off. You enjoying the uh, photographer down there? Yeah, I'm going to have to have a word. <laughs> In your eye, well, you know. I don't know what the referee is uh, talking. Is this well, oh, Geno Geno is going to go to the box going, now. Yeah, he's going to. By the way, I would have. Uh, you know, the the game in in New York that would have taken the protocol guy quite a. Oh boy, <laughs> he's got ten of them. <laughs> uh, you're next. It would have been a you're line. You're next. Yeah. yeah, come in here, have a seat. Yeah. Rolling puck in front of the leap goal taken by McCabe back of the net, but Kucherov is on him there quickly and it goes to Declare. Declare along the far boards. Nylander couldn't come out with it. Point does. He'll play it back of the net. Good play by Benoit to take him off the puck, but then Tavares didn't help out by taking it up on the wing and now Point gets it back to the blue line. Near side for Declare. Down into the corner, Kucherov. Kucherov works out of the corner, fanned on a pass, then gets it to the net. That was stopped by Wall. Punched around the boards. Nylander will take it back into his own zone. Declare stepped into him, and now Willie has to go all the way back behind his goal. He's winding it up. Here comes Nylander, and then he turns all the way back. The Leafs are trying to get a change going. Pontus Holmberg turns with it. He'll drop it off for Brody. Brody looks for Nyes. Then plays up on the left wing for Holmberg. Holmberg, a nice move. Got in with a shot. And it is gloved by Vasilevsky. And he's going to hold for a faceoff coming in the Tampa Bay zone. Empty little move by Pontus Holmberg coming over the line. I don't know. I think a lot of people, once you get Darren Crook and Mitch Marner back, a lot of people might have Pontus Holmberg out of the lineup, but... I like him in the number three spot as a center. Maybe partially because I prefer David Camp in the fourth line. Yeah. Now Timmons had to go off a skate. It comes to center. Leafs in on the left wing with Brody. Long shot, well wide of the goal. Finds Robertson in along the boards for Nyes. Double team, but Holmberg comes out of it with a pass to Brody. Brody with a pass in front of the net, and it didn't carry him the right way as it's cleared to center ice and down into the leaf end. Timmons going back for it. 
Played by Isamont around on the near wing. Lightning still with it and a 3-1 lead to go with it. Down into the corner for Nick Paul. Paul around back of the net. Tampa is now a penalty coming to Toronto. Uh, and as it's touched. Connor Timmons can't let go of the stick when you're chasing and he almost grabs the jersey it seems of Nick Paul in behind the net so not only was the penalty ill-advised but really ineffective penalty kill brought to you by CMC markets take your trading to the next level with zero dollar commission on stocks this period brought to you by Molson whether it's Canadian ultra export or XL there's a Molson with your name on it so light named uh, we talked about the least multi-goal comebacks against Tampa, but he might be able to, the way this game has gone, put this one to bed here. Pass across! Kucherov fanned on a one-timer. Centers it in front of the goal. It's coming back to the blue line. Just kept in by Hedman. Round on the boards to Kucherov. A quick centering pass. Knocked into the corner then by Camp. Around on the far side, Brody tried to knock it ahead to get to uh, Dewar, but it didn't reach him. Near side, Kucherov. Kucherov, a cross-ice pass, one-timer by Stamkos went wide. Kucherov back to the point, it goes to Hedman. To Kucherov again, centering feed. That deflects high over top of the leaf goal. Pushed ahead, Dewar just does get it out at center ice. Leafs are trying to get a defenseman exchange, but they can't. Brought in again now by point. Point with it to the far side. Stamkos holds, top of the circle on the far wing. To Hedman at the point, drilled into the chest of Wall. And he is going to smother and hold for a face-off. Uh, Hedman scored from about that range in the first period through a screen, but there in the power play, really nobody in front of Joseph Wall. Usually you might get Braden Point sniffing around looking for the redirection or the rebound. And he really wasn't in a position to get a stick on a redirection. Face-off to the left of Wall. Minute five to go in the power play, and the Leafs win a faceoff, and it is quickly shot by Benoit down the ice. Hedman turning with it in his own zone. Works his way to center, drops it back for Kucherov. Here is Nikita Kucherov to the line, got it back again on a pass. It's centered in front of the net. It bounced over Labushkin's stick back into the slot. Near side, Kucherov, he fanned on it as it went into the far corner. Back to the point to Hedman. To Kucherov, it's power play goes through him as it comes back to the near point. Now to the point again to Kucherov in front of shot. Wall got in front of that on a good save. Kept alive again by Hedman to Kucherov on the right wing. Off a skate, it goes into the slot area, and it's swept wide of the net by Braden Point. Stamkos, far corner, back to the blue line to Hedman. Hedman holds, near side Kucherov, six seconds left. Kucherov still with it to Hedman, holding, shooting with a deflection in front. Knocked away, Leafs trying to get it out. Penalty over, and a shot is deflected wide of the goal by Wall. Hedman keeping it in at the blue line. Played it into the corner. Staff Coast double teamed over there. Going the Leafs to get a change going. 11.55 to go. The Leafs need a pair. Stamkos and Holmberg getting into it over right in front of the benches. Brought out slowly by Benoit. Tried to find Bertuzzi. Somehow that's not icing. And it's down into the Tampa Bay zone. Puck in the corner is lifted high to center ice. Knocked away there by Riley. And it's offside. And that will bring a stoppage of play. The Leafs lead three to or trail three to one in this game to the Tampa Bay Lightning. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. They are among the greatest to ever play their sports. Caitlin Clark is the all-time scoring leader. They are legends and icons. Howie Bird hit the shot with no second thought. I know how he did it. And you can hear them right now on the all-new Sirius XM app. We are here with Iowa superstar Caitlin Clark. I'm so focused on winning. It's never anything I ever take for granted. Here comes Larry Bird, the Hall of Famer, and he just won Legend of the Year. Legend of the Year, isn't that something? For access to the game's greats, we lie on the leader in sports audio. Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. The point with Boomer Gordon. Andrew Burnett is your Jack Adams winner. Oh. 
70 points in 52 games. You project that over 82, Jake, that's an 111-point pace. So they've gone head-to-head -head with the big boys of the West all year. Andrew Burnett inherited a new GM in Barry Trotz and a sinking payroll. And he's got this team playing as well as any team in the NHL. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. There is no competition in soccer quite like the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XM FC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jim Bellingham's driving, driving scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage and all the top matches are on Sirius XM FC 157 and the all-new Sirius XM app. The biggest names in the game. Trying to get behind, wrist the line, and walks in, put it between his legs, shoots it, score! NHL Play by Play on Sirius XM. Joe Bone and Jim Ralph back here as the Maple Leafs are trailing 3-1. to one. Austin Matthews has scored his 63rd. The most goals in a season by active players. Alex Ovechkin had 65 in the 07-08 season. And, of course, Connor McDavid scored 64 last campaign. So those two are going to have some company here, you would think, fairly quickly. But it uh, would be nice if the big guy got another one here to get the Leafs back into this game down a pair. By the way, Tampa, you know, they had their point streak snapped in the loss at home against Detroit. Their last 10 on the road, they're 8 1 and 1. They were similar to what the Leafs did in Vegas and Colorado in that trip. Yeah, they're only 18 16 and 3 overall, so they've come a long way, yes. haven't they, in that department? Puck in the corner, centering pass, cut off there by Hagel. Fed into the slot area, and Hayden Fleury has sent the puck down the ice. Wall had to make a play on it, and the pass comes into the slot for Samkos, and that was deflected off a skate. Karnick sending it around back of the net. The Leafs get it ahead for Tavares, but he's not going to be able to get it out. Kept alive there nicely by Hagel. Couldn't get a shot away, and the Leafs finally battle enough to get it through to center, but uh, not finding Nylander. Allows Hagel to bring it right back in again into the slot. And a good shot there off the blocker of Wall. Played down into Tampa Bay territory. Leafs into the four check as it comes around on the boards to the far side to Domi. Domi centers, oh. and um, at least Bertuzzi was right on the doorstep but never made any contact. Now Domi trying to center again. Bertuzzi after it in the far corner. Gets it back to Matthews. Matthews sidesteps one. Back of the net it goes for Bertuzzi. He gets knocked down, but the puck comes free. And now here the Lightning playing it out and down the ice, but they're saying it went off. Labushkin sticks, so there's no icing. Labushkin trying to reverse the puck and does now for Brody. Brody got it up on the wing and nice. Let it go. May have got a piece of it, or someone did, because there's no icing there. Lightning are back in their own zone. A pass up the middle, and it bounces in on Wall, who blockers it into the corner. Pontus Holmberg up against the boards. Got it for Nyes. Nyes quickly engaged. Holmberg finds an opening to find McCabe, who drops it off to his defense partner, and Benoit with a bank pass to spring Holmberg into the offensive zone. Nyes, after a loose puck, played it back to the net, but Robertson had gone to the front of the goal, and there was... No chance for cycling the puck there. Dumba will play it out at center. Benoit, a clip there on the way by, by Isamont. Now the Lightning will play it down into the zone. And it is Brody reversing the puck for Robertson against the boards. Trying to get it freed up, rather, Nylander. It comes to the far side. Robertson can't get it out. Robertson trying to dig it out of a maze in the corner. Glenn Denning has got it pinned up there. We'll let you know when it gets free. Uh, still on the boards. Uh, still on the boards. Uh, still on. Oh, now it's free. It comes out. Mock back to the point. The shot went wide. Blue line kept in there by Chernick. But he gives it away. And Tavares 
through center ice to Nylander. Flipped in on a bounce that will go into the glove of Veselevsky and is smothered to stop playing a faceoff coming in the Tampa Bay zone. 8-19 left to play, third period. And the Lightning with a 3-1 lead. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Breaking story from Alpine News Network. Sandra and Kabir are celebrating 50 years of marriage by turning their boring bedroom into a spicy one. Oh, my. Alpine Credit sent a super strength hero to help with a home renovation load. New floors, windows, a heart-shaped button that plays this tune. Okay, I think that's quite enough. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Just for license 12616. Hello, people of the GTA. Patio season is around the corner. But why wait for packed parks and King Street? When you can head to Canada's favorite paradise, Cuba, for less. Book early with Sunwing and kick back in Holguin or Cayo Santa Maria, where the mojitos are always fresh. When you save more, you can do more. Book with your local travel agent or at This spring, transform your ride with the 2024 Toyota Camry SE Upgrade from Maple Toyota. With its athletic styling, great power and fuel efficiency, Toyota Safety Sense, and high levels of innovative technology, you'll be sure to enjoy wherever the road takes you this spring in this fun size ride. The 2024 Toyota Camry SE Upgrade is in stock and available now for immediate delivery at Maple Toyota. Make it easy. Make it Maple. Visit mapletoyota.com. Part of the Zankin Auto Group. Leafs trail 3 to 1. 8:19 to play in period number 3 and the faceoff coming in the Tampa Bay zone. They'll say there's maybe a disturbing trend with Joseph Wall. If the Leafs are unable to get anything more past Andre Vasilevsky, since coming back he is only 2 and 4. But in the four losses the Leafs have only scored six goals for him. So it's not like he's getting a lot of run support. Maybe his best game of the year was that 2-1 loss in Carolina. Yeah, you're right. Our best game since he's come back, for sure. Now, unfortunately, he gave up a goal on the very first shot. Which, but, has, which has happened a few times. Yeah, since then, Tampa's had... 23. Here's David Camp getting it back to the point. Timmons can't shoot it. Now a shot by Dewar went wide. Timmons gets it again. Fakes a shot. Works it back on the boards. Got it back to the blue line. Camp filling in for him. Back of the net for Reeves. Reeves to Dewar. Connor Dewar taken out of the play on the wing. It goes high into the far corner and Timmons is going to pinch there. Timmons working it around back of the net. Camp couldn't come up with it. And the Tampa Bay Lightning are skating it out at center. Got it ahead off the stick of Glenn Denning down into the Lightning or into the Leafs zone. David Camp got it out into neutral ice, but Bertuzzi couldn't help him out. Glenn Denning shoots it right back into the Leafs zone. 7-11. Left to play in the third. Morgan Riley. Back into the lineup tonight. Gets to center and fires it. And it bounced. Oh! It went off the stanchion at the door where the Zamboni comes out. And then ricocheted right to the net and it hit the goal post on the near side. Here's a loose puck in front of the net. Down low a chance. And that was stopped as Matthews was there. Trying to knock it down there with a glove. And it'll be a whistle here on a glove pass was McCabe. Boy, did Vasilevsky ever seal that off and that, that area we have seen I remember the Leafs playing Montreal and Carey Price came out of the net to play it and then hit that same area yep. bounced out front and cost them you know with the young the, the gentleman that is always a micromanager like Lou Lamorello when the first time we went into that new arena and the home goal was by in the, the Zamboni in the, and there was a carom that went off and went I said, I can't believe Lou didn't figure that out, that maybe they should take the other end of the rink. But, of course, their dressing facilities and everything were down there, and they're closer to their practice rink. So 
But also, the uh, there are a few buildings like that. I believe Philadelphia. Yep. Home is where that Zamboni door is. Played down into the Tampa Bay zone. Vasilevsky played it into the corner. Robertson got in there, but the puck squirts free. The Lightning have it and get it out at center. And Kucherov trying to find his man missed. And that turns into an icing. Point missed pass by Kucherov. So I have officially changed my mind on the Hart Trophy. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh. Can't be doing that at this level. No, 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 no. no. But he is, I mean, such a, a sneaky player. I mean, he's it, it used to be like you'd watch Wayne Gretzky play in the 80s. And you'd say, you know, I didn't notice him a whole lot. He didn't you, dominate. Until you picked um, up the newspaper the next not, day? I don't know. I mean, you're watching the game and you're going... I didn't even know he got a point on his sixth assist there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Now here are the Leafs. Riley had it knocked off his stick. Kept in by Tavares. A pass in front deflected by Nylander just wide. Kept in at the blue line. Trying to make a play was Timmons, but it is launched high to center ice. And now brought in over the line. Nick Paul scores! From fairly well out, a wrist shot by Nick Paul beats the blocker of Joseph Wall to put this one to bed. Four to one. Twenty-fourth shot of the night for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Their fourth goal. It'll be their first victory over the Leafs, unless there's a miracle comeback again. But the Leafs not as much time to work with. They've had before, and that comes right after Willie Nylander had that great opportunity and a redirection, but couldn't get enough of it to get it past Vasilevsky. And Vasilevsky's been brilliant, hasn't he? Yep. He just from making some spectacular saves to just sealing off the net and not giving up anything that would appear to be suspicious. Nick Paul scores his 20th of the year. It's a career high for him. First time he's hit the 20-goal mark. Played down into the Toronto zone. Labushkin takes Isamont to the boards. And it is scrum there and poke free. And now the Leafs will launch it out at center ice. And Reeves gives way to David Camp. Back in over the line. It bounced over Camp stick. And the Lightning will play it around back of the net. Reeves steps into Hayden Flurry. And the puck goes off a stick and into the Tampa Bay bench. Let's see where they're going to face this off. And it'll be outside the Tampa Bay blue line. So Leafs' next action is against Les Bleu Brun et Rouge in Montreal on Saturday night. We'll have that action for you right here on TSN beginning at 7 o'clock on TSN 1050. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Don't miss a second of the men's and women's Final Four on Sirius XM. We're going to have a new champion in women's basketball. The women's semifinals tip off Friday at 7 Eastern. Clark, right wing three. You've got to be kidding me. Then the men take the court Saturday at 6. DJ Burns may have just put an exclamation point on an NC State win. Listen to Westwood One's coverage on Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84, and the all-new Sirius XM app. Hockey 24-7 on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. This is the NHL. These are pros. You don't want guys to put good power play units on, don't take penalties. You don't want good power play units to score goals when you've given up a whole bunch, kill them. You don't like it, do something about it. If you want to reward your guys who had a good game with a chance to get some more goals and points, do it. If I was a coach, I wouldn't care. Who cares? Worry about your own team, don't worry about mine. Sirius XM, NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91. And on your schedule with the Sirius XM app. NHL Morning Skate. Andrew Burnett, head coach of the Nashville Predators. I think Roman Yossi gets underrated nowadays. I think maybe the consistency that he does it every year, um, you take it for granted a little bit. I mean, he's done everything in this game. His ability to raise his game is, is very unique. You know, I've been around some really good, great defensemen. Uh, he, he's right up there with them, and, and he does get over them. NHL Morning Skate with Scott Lachlan and Gord Stellar. Weekdays, 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. The best hockey lives here. Burns gets it back. Stick handles to the backhand. Moves in front. Score! Any Joe play by play on Sirius XM. Blue line. 
5.06 to play here in the third period, and a lot of folks, uh, please tell us that the Gardner's not down to one lane tonight. You mean the Don Valley? Oh, the Don Valley. Right and, or yeah. the Gardner? Or the, whatever. Uh, a lot of folks seem to be heading to the exits. Paul yeah. gets the goal from uh, Radish. And the Tampa Bay Lightning as it's brought in with a shot that deflects off the stick of Isamont up into the screen. There is no question that if you are the Boston Bruins or the New York Rangers, your idea of finishing first got a lot oh, more yeah. important because of what these guys are doing yeah, at whatever. the other end of the scale. Now, the Rangers had blown the lead that they had against the New Jersey Devils. It was 3-2 Jersey. Last we checked, no, oh, 4-3 Rangers now. Oh, okay. Well, the Rangers have 104 points, and Boston has 103. Nine games left for the Bruins, and the Rangers have uh, seven left, including tonight. The Bruins are idle. So Boston's got some games in hand. So Boston-Tampa with the first round matchup right now, and Toronto-Florida. Way to go, all those four teams, for having a solid season. Yeah. Two of you are gone in the first round. And I do believe, I, I mean, I think this is one of those examples where you should be going one to eight. There should be some a more, yeah, some more of a benefit for finishing first. Yep. And my point is, when you start talking about divisions and the balance of the schedule and everything else, Leafs are only going to play Montreal three times this year. Same mm -hmm. division. Yep. And, it, well, and they, they play the West twice. Twice. That's right. It's not a not a, yeah, a significant, significant change. change. No, you're right. Matthews back of the goal. Can't get it in front. Hedman will play it into the slot area. Leafs got a shot away off the stick of McKay, but it went wide. Centering pass looking for Matthews. He tees it up and got it freed up for Domi. Now around the boards to the far side. Benoit pinches to try and keep it in. Matthews intercepts a pass in the slot. Doesn't shoot it. McCabe will. And it's into the glove of Veselovsky. 26 shot on goal for the Maple Leafs. They're going to be fairly even in that department. Let's take a look at the schedules here for Boston. They're at Carolina, home to Florida and Carolina. Travel to Pittsburgh, home to Washington, and finish the season on April the 16th against Ottawa. So they're going to have four days off before the playoffs start if they start on the 20th which is what everybody assumes the Maple Leafs meanwhile have to play back to back on the 16th and 17th against Florida and Tampa you can't see them starting on the Saturday would they I, I don't know I mean there's possibility I suppose but having said I, I that mean, I guess you're already down there right? yeah if you're playing Florida and you don't have home ice advantage why wouldn't you just stay down there? I don't, I don't think there'd be any reason at all to come home. Shot down into the right wing corner. Racing after it was McMahon. He couldn't reach it. And it's played out at center. The New York Rangers, on the other hand, playing tonight at home against the Devils. They go to Detroit at home against Montreal. At home against or at the New York Islanders. Home against Philadelphia. Home against the Islanders. And home against Ottawa. Strength of schedule would benefit the Rangers. Oh, uh, we've already talked about that. Yes, we have. Me. Yes, yeah. we have. We've, we've, <laughs> there's no strength there of schedule. Is not. <laughs> no, don't even worry about it. Because it means nothing. Remember Pittsburgh's strength of schedule last year as opposed to Florida's to get in. Mm -hmm. yeah, Leafs back it. in their own zone. Two and a half minutes to play. Brody. Got it ahead. Camp can't get it in. Sends it back to Brody in the Toronto zone. They'll go D to D. Benoit got it ahead. And Reeves sends it down into the Tampa Bay end. Lightning play it out at center and down into the Toronto zone. Austin Matthews has the lone Toronto goal. Camp across the line. Reeves makes a nice play to open up on the far side. Benoit chipping it into the corner. That, or Lubushkin tied up in there. Can't get it in front of the net. 
Minute 52 left to play. Up against the boards, Reeves bangs into his man, but the Lightning are going to get free of it, and it'll be Chernick coming to center and just playing it into the Toronto end. If you're going to Montreal for the Leaf game on Saturday, congratulations. It should be a great time. Yeah, atmosphere is yeah. always terrific in the Bell Center. Well, it's been a while, I mean, other than the Canadian division, where they've both been good at the same time. Mm -hmm. Puck at the blue line, final minute and 10 seconds. The Leafs are going to try to play it in. It's blocked. Yeah. Punched along the boards, and Robertson gets it down into the zone. Around the boards it comes, and it is played to the line. Knocked down with a high stick by Brody. 54.7 seconds remaining here in the third period. Well, how about this? As Nikita Kucherov has retaken the lead in the NHL scoring race since the 2016-17 season, Kucherov is one of only four players to have over 700 points. Players ahead of him, McDavid, Dreisaitl, and McKinnon. Oh, and by the way, uh, Kucherov also missed an entire season, the 2021 season. Only 56 games. But you remember he didn't come back until the playoffs? Yeah, that kind of worked somewhat to the benefit of the team uh, yeah, as far cap as the cap yes. was concerned. But having said that, he does it quietly, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. At the point, pass into the slot area for Isamont. Can't get a shot away. Final 26 seconds ticking down. And it'll be cleared to the line and out at center ice. And Lightning will just shoot it right back in again. Long lead pass finds Nyes. But he's by himself. And his wrist shot was knocked down by Vasilevsky. And he's going to cover up on it. And if... Uh, Andre Vasilevsky is back in form, and he's not given us any indication tonight that he isn't. Yeah. Leafs have only had three shots here in the third period. Hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> it seems like Vasilevsky made three great saves. In but the second period. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in a period that the Leafs are trying to push. And there's another one. And it is shot down the ice, but it's right on goal. And the final seconds will tick down. So the Leafs will lose on home ice for the 14th time or for the 14th time this season and the 23rd time overall and do not clinch a playoff spot tonight because of the loss to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Well, what better way to do it than on national TV on a Saturday night in Montreal? Although that's something the Canadians would would love to screw up for them, wouldn't they? But the Leafs have to be much better defensively. 29-26, um, you know, the pushback in the third period was not significant by any stretch of the imagination. And um, bad news for the Bruins or the Florida Panthers or the New York Rangers or Carolina Hurricanes, whoever may have to play the Tampa Bay Lightning in the opening round. You because they're, they're close and Vasilevsky looks like the guy that uh, won a Conn Smythe trophy in a couple of cups. 4-1, the Lightning win it. We'll step aside for the post-game show. You're listening to Molson Leaf Hockey on TSN 1050 and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. The Points with Boomer Gordon. Andrew Burnett is your Jack Adams winner. Oh. 70 points in 52 games. You project that over 82, Jake. That's an 111-point pace. So they've gone head-to-head -head with the big boys of the West all year. Andrew Burnett inherited a new GM in Barry Trotz and a sinking payroll, and he's got this team playing as well as any team in the NHL. Boys with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. NHL Morning Skate. The general manager of the Vegas Golden Knights, Kelly McCrimmon. Vegas so quickly has become a place where players want to go. Players appreciate that we're trying to win, and uh, I think we've come to expect it. It's their livelihood and all of those things that go with it. So we try to do uh, what we can to, to help that happen. NHL Morning Skate with Scott Lachlan and Gord Stone. Weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. 
the power play with Steve Coolius. Toronto? Yeah, they don't have a face card. Like, they don't have an ace. Morgan's a jack. They have so many non-face cards that these guys are going to have the bullpen by committee. Because the real truth is this. They have a good forward group. But if you don't defend against Boston and Florida, you're not seeing Boston or Florida in round two. That's the exam, and the test will be on this defense. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Hey Toronto, I'm David Moore Sudi, host of the daily Toronto Me Please podcast, Locked On Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network on the Sirius XM app. Every weekday, we bring you the latest Leafs news and analysis, break down all the action, including this game you're listening to right now, and preview the next one. We're giving you everything a Leafs fan could want, all in a daily 30-minute podcast. Download Locked On Leafs right now on the Sirius XM app, available with all trials and popular plans. No competition in soccer, quite like the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XM FC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage, where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jude Bellingham's driving, driving scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage, and all the top matches are on Sirius XM FC 157 and the all new Sirius XM app. Join me, Ward Stellick, and Scott Lachlan as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. The biggest names in the game. Trying to get behind, wrist the line, and walks in, put it between his legs, shoots it, score! NHL play by play on Sirius XM. Join me, Scott Lachlan, and Gord Stellick, along with former NHLer Mike Johnson for NHL Morning Skate. Weekday morning, 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. Hockey lives here. Suzuki sweeps it. There's a chance. Rebound, Caulfield shoots and scores. NHL Play by Play on Sirius XM. On TSN 1050 and the Leafs Radio Network, the Leafs live here. Tampa wins it by a score of 4-1 over the Toronto Maple Leafs. Welcome to Leafs Game Night, the post-game show live from Scotiabank Arena. Jim Taddy alongside Josh Cloak from The Athletic. And Jimmy Ralph, kind enough to hang around. Ralphie, I mean, that was uh, sort of a typical Tampa win in that they they had uh, good zone pressure, great goaltending, and took advantage of things. Yeah, and, and, you know, the Leafs earlier in the year, you know, remember, uh, Ilya Samsonov never got out of the first period. Got pulled, I think, on, what, three goals and five shots in Tampa and um, gave up four in the first period here at home. And the Leafs were able to come back with Joseph Wall and uh, and win both those games. Uh, won an overtime on a Tavares goal in Tampa and then, uh, you know, a rather uh, significant comeback win uh, here on home ice as well. So uh, I'll say one thing. If anything comes out of this game, Tampa's goalie is back. Yeah. And they said that, um, you know, they weren't playing great in front of him defensively when he first came back, that he was probably better than his numbers showed. But he said, that now you see he's starting to lock in. And um, that's bad news for anybody that gets the lightning in the first round. Yeah, it's hard to score on a piece of plywood. Yeah, and the piece of plywood's already won a Conn Smythe trophy. So uh, there, there, is a, um, there is a pedigree there for sure. Yeah. That, that version of Andre Vasilevsky changes these playoffs. Yeah, and, and you almost wonder... I mean, the injury, a back injury, I remember, you know, Bernie Perron has essentially ended his career, a dominant goalie before back surgery and, and came back and was never quite the same. Obviously, the uh, the procedures are probably a little more um, successful now and being able to come back, but, but it's significant enough that it's going to take you a while uh, to find your form again. And um, I think it's great for the game that you've you've got somebody that's, um, many have said has been the best goal, and I agree with this, the best goaltender in the league the last five or six years. The Leafs just didn't seem to have an answer, did they? No, it was almost, it was one of those games where it looked like they felt they'd accomplished something the game before. And yeah. it was sort of like, okay, we did it. We proved we can beat Florida, and we stood up to them physically and everything else. And, uh, you know, you see that a lot. It'll be interesting to see what the Rangers and Devils do in their next games. Because those, when you have these emotional games, like the, like the Leafs did against Edmonton, you have these emotional wins and everything, it's tough to try to manufacture that the next game. Uh, Especially for the Leafs, at, the, at this should, point in the season. Too. Yeah. And, and uh, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how those teams, I always thought it was always great when you got the Rangers or Islanders 
the game after they played each other. Well, when you got one of them, the game yeah. after, because the energy level wasn't there. And uh, you would think there might be enough of a rivalry now between the Leafs and Tampa that you'd automatically get charged up. And um, that was probably the disappointing part of it. Yeah, to me, it, it just illustrates the difference or, or, or how much goaltending can win you a series, right? Because, again, that version of Andre Vasilevsky could steal them a series, right? That version of Joseph Wall that we saw tonight it is a big part of the reason why Ilya Samsonov is, is going to be the Game 1 starter. Um, you know, Joe Wall is still working his way back from his own injury yeah. and, and finding and, his and own And Vasilevsky group. has had more time to come back than, than Wall has. And, and there point. were saves tonight. There were athletic saves that, that Wall made that, that made you go, okay, that that's him, that's him. But when he gets frozen from in close so often, it just suggests the goaltender is, is not sharp, not where he wants to be, still feeling things out. And, like, you know, we can argue whether or not this, this game is on Joseph Wall, but when it's clear to the five skaters in front of the goaltender that the goaltender does not have it on the night, things change mentally, and things change really, really quick. Yeah, but one of the things that should change is if Braden points alone in front of the net, <laughs> somebody should go there. Wow, well, that, that's a colossal uh, <laughs> yeah, there breakdown, were, but, yeah, but the, sta- the Stamkos goal is, is the one that leaves the mark, uh, not only because of how it was scored, because it makes it 3-1. Yeah, and and similar to the goal, if you can remember Jake DeBrus scoring in Boston, and I think it put Boston up two nothing at the time, and it, and it was similar. It was, you know, the the Leafs make a defensive miscue, but when goals are going through goaltenders, whether it's you know under the arm, but five hole especially along the ice, that's when you know somebody isn't clicked in a hundred percent, and that's when you know when a when a guy's got some struggles. Now, in fairness to Joseph Wall, who I believe is two and five since coming back from the injury. If I'm right with that, in the five losses, uh, the Leafs have scored a grand total of seven goals. And they scored three in one game in the the loss at home against the New Jersey Devils. So it was 4-1 to Boston twice, 2-1 in Carolina, and now a um, a 4-1 loss here against Tampa. So it's not like when Samsonov had his struggles back in December where they were 6-5 overtime losses or 5-4 games. Um, it, it seems to go hand-in-hand hand that... Um, you know, he and, and what happens is now you overanalyze every goal against because when you only get one the other way. You're right, Ralphie. If you look at the games that he's played since he comes back, right, he has that first game against Arizona, bit of a mulligan there. Then you look at the teams that he's played since. Boston, Two Boston. Two against Boston, Washington, Carolina, Jersey, Washington, Tampa, right? Yeah. So outside of, I guess, Jersey, which was a loss, these are all playoff teams. Yeah, all you know, decent. Yeah, teams and like I said, and the goals four do play into it because you know what? If the Leafs win this game four three in overtime, we're not talking about the goal Joe Wall gave up to Steven Stamkos. We're saying, boy, it was a great play by Matthews and great team effort to get back into it. But when you only score once and there's one or two goals against it, you go, gee, you, uh, you kind of think you should have those. And and even the, even though again, and, and it's through a maze, and it's Victor Hedman, and it's a great shot. The Leafs surrender a lot of goals on screened wrist shots from the point. And we saw um, Samsonov gave up the, the Montour goal against Florida a couple of nights ago. They seem to have a lot of those where, where, where you just say, why doesn't, it, why doesn't this balance out? I know the Leafs don't shoot the puck a lot from the point. And when they do, they, they don't have defensemen that seem to be able to get it through. But um, it's, it's, like I said, you, you start to overanalyze uh when, when you only score one goal. Well, that, now, yeah, yeah, now, you, now you've got to look. But but it's true. The timing of the Stamkos goal was probably um, as much as anything uh, how this game ended up in Tampa's favor. Does this performance, does this game change your thoughts on the game one starter at all? Or are we past that? No, I, I mean, I think Samsonov has earned it. Yeah. Uh, and, he, and he earned it with Joseph Wall out of the lineup. Um you know, to me, uh, it was such a turning point for Samsonov to get back in goal after the Leafs loss in Vancouver on a Saturday night. Samsonov came in Sunday in Seattle. And if he wasn't great Sunday in Seattle, they lose. And I'm, we're not talking average. We're not talking just be better than your struggles. Yep. Um, and, th- and then they finished the home-and-home home with Winnipeg. You remember the one nothing oh, overtime yeah. win at home? He was absolutely brilliant. So I think what, what Samsonov has done, even as, um, you know, the game in Buffalo, the 3 nothing game, I mean, he's the reason they win that. 
um, you know, as much as we can talk about Stamco's goal and everything else. Um, so what what really, to me, the, the reason Elias Samsonov's the number one choice to this point, um, I don't know how much the next six or seven games can, well, can play into it. Well, like, yeah, this is part of the, the discussion now for me. So you got six right. games left. It feels like Samsonov has the, the, the starting job. Yes. Do you continue to split the starts? Or do you, if you're Sheldon Keefe, do you kind of say, we know Samsonov's the guy now. Let's keep him rolling going into the playoffs. Because that was the plan heading into the playoffs. They're going to split the starts completely once Joseph Paul yep. came back. I think, you know, I, I still think the standings are going to play into it a bit. I, I think they know they're going to open on the road. I yep. think, you know, even though mathematically, um, you know, probably fl- you're closer to Florida than Tampa because you've got the game in hand, right, on Florida. And it's four either yeah. way. But I think the um, it may play into it where you say, hey, we, we've we got Tampa is now on a run and and can catch us, and we don't want to drop to the wild card spot. So you might have to play that. Well, there are certain games we want to win uh, to, to make sure we're – we're in the top three and, and not sliding out. Um, all the way it looks, you, you're not going to get an easy matchup in the first round regardless. Am I in the minority, or would it not be the worst thing at all for this team to start on the road? Oh, oh no, no. Oh. We've said that from the beginning. <laughs> that's a, that was that's one of the a, concerns. Ralph, we registered that with the trademark. <laughs> Did he? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they, well, you're going to start making some money on it now. Well, and, and, and part of the reason is, and, and we've, we've seen it with this team, with the history of this team, Yeah. that um, as soon as you... You start to think this is it, yep. and they're on a roll, and then, then comes the dip. And as soon as you say they got no chance and they're in trouble, then they get up off the mat, and it looks like the end of every Rocky movie we've ever seen, right? And um, and I remember so the last time for me <laughs> that that has happened, and I'm sure for uh, a lot of Toronto Maple Leaf fans, Morgan Riley gets suspended, Leafs lose in Ottawa again, and then you looked at the schedule and you said, my God. Yeah. They could be out of a playoff yep. spot by the time they get back from Colorado in two weeks. Yep. And then they get their next game at home against St. Louis. Marner and Tavares are out. Riley's first game of his suspension, and you're going, oh, no. St. Louis was on a pretty good run coming yep. in. And they get St. Louis twice. They get Philadelphia. I think Anaheim might have been the only game that you would have considered soft. But anyway, that starts the seven or eight game road trip uh, or winning streak. And the seven game winning streak, and you're going, yeah, that figures as soon yeah. as you think. <laughs> so I, I'm, I kind of like the thought that I, I think the majority of people will say, you know, based on Florida's run, if it is going to be say Florida in the first round, if we know it's Boston, we we know the narrative there. Um, but if it was Florida, people are going to say, look, that is the team went to the finals last year. The Leafs still aren't tough enough. Uh, the goaltending's not as good as Florida's goaltending. And then for the first time in Sheldon Keefe's tenure, the Leafs will open on the road in the playoffs and be the underdogs. And so instead of, you know, this you know this this cry that, boy, this is the year and this is, you know, go in and be the underdogs. In 93, and I hate going back to 93, for, no, let alone 67, the Leafs weren't supposed to beat Detroit in the first round. Nope. Um, you know, they weren't supposed to beat St. Louis. And, uh, yeah, I can <laughs> see the, the Chris, water bottle. On Chris Broadhurst. Yeah. No, that was Brian Papineau. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Papi, yeah. 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 But the, um, you know, that's, uh, and especially now, and, you know, when you look to last year and you see what Seattle does to Colorado in the first round, it's a lot of pressure having home ice because. Okay. So push it forward then. In, in that scenario, you know what would work really well for them? So the last two games on the road, Florida, Tampa. Mail it the, in. The, I did not say that, Ralphie. You can trademark that one. You can trademark oh, that Oh, believe one. me, when I played, I trademarked that one. <laughs> I think you better renew it. Yeah. <laughs> so you play, you, 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 you play in Florida, Tampa. You finish your season on a Wednesday. Theoretically, you would start on a Saturday. You just stay in Florida. If you team, oh, if yeah. your team, you stay in Florida. You get it. You mentioned the pressure. You get away from Toronto, right? You have a day to yourself there. Collect yourself as a team. I, I think that would really, really work for this team. Yeah, because a lot of times they, you know, in the old days, I don't know the last time they would have done it, is um, if they had a few days off, they'd go up to Collingwood or they'd take yep. off as sort of a team-building thing and, and do the same thing. Like you were saying, get away from it all. Um, but, yeah, I could see that kind of being the um, Not the worst mindset. thing. And, you know, even if it's Boston, you stay in Florida for an extra day. Sure. 
you know, and uh, and head up the ball. What are you shaking your head for? Uh, because we keep coming up with ways that to, to help the team win. Just go out and play better. That's all. Boy, just make the boy, adjustments. Boy, that, that would have saved us a lot of time in the post game show if you would have just said that. Yeah, yeah, all right, I'm clocking out now. Yeah, I'm no, I mean, out. But even yeah. this, even this game tonight, I mean. You know, you're going to have this game in the playoffs. You're not going to yeah. win 16 straight. You're going to have this, and and maybe you have two of these in a row. But you have to come up with a solution. You got to yeah. you got to play your way out of it. Well, I mean, I think they have. I mean, they've been competitive enough to get in every year. I mean, I just think that the it's a team that doesn't bode well as a favorite. You know, I yeah. th- I think if you can flip the script on it, and and say, you know what. You're not the favorite. You're you're you don't have this toughness. I think it's easier for a team to say, "Oh no, we can do it," as opposed to you know carrying that pressure of since 1967 and this is the year and we finished first. <laughs> the and history it was a franchise, my favorite, <laughs> and it's a franchise record in yeah. points. Yeah, and um, and it doesn't turn out. And, and like I said, and, and it's no different than whether they're tough or not this year. It it doesn't matter. We're going to find out. And they could be tougher, but not better. You know, there's there's a lot of questions that, that are going to be answered well, in the opening round, regardless of the op, of I, the opposition. I think the reason we're optimistic is is that, uh, as you say, when, when you don't expect you're going to do something, they do. And a lot of that is based on the roster. You know, who's not in? Can they win without yeah. these people? And they, they, they have the depth there to do it. So I've, I've said many times that, you know, it'll take everything for them to succeed, whatever your, le- your, your definition of succeeding is. Uh, but... There has to be adjustments made. Something's not going to work. So how you know how long are you going to take to figure out that uh, that has to change, uh, and uh, when are you going to do it? And you know what might be the most important one is goaltending. Yeah, that might be. And again, and, and forget the the Leaf history, um, but you look at uh, the year Washington won it. Braden Holpe was the hero. Didn't play in the first three games of the playoffs uh, before going in. Sergey Bobrovsky. They go to the finals last yeah. year. Guess what? Doesn't yeah. doesn't start until game four. Yeah. So you know there's there is that other element of it, is that you have to have somebody get hot at the right time, and it might be Ilya Samsonov to start, and it might be Joseph Walls had his struggles, and that was the thing with Holpe. Remember he was struggling, mm-hmm. so Grubauer got the start in the playoffs, and then he found it. So there's uh, I still think this in the, the in, you know what Josh was saying earlier, it's why you want both goalies ready. Because you don't know, and, you know, from injury, uh, which Samsonov can be prone to, uh, to indifferent play. You've got to be able to have that guy that can step in and has a little bit of sway or a little bit of experience that uh, you can help turn uh, a playoff series around. So I'm, I still think out of, out of all the different scenarios and who's in the lineup and who isn't, uh, goaltending is going to be the main one, that you've got to find one of them. Um, to get on a roll like like Bobrovsky did last year. Ralphie, thanks for hanging around. Well, if um, hopefully the uh, construction guys uh, in the Don Valley have gotten the pylons <laughs> out, and <laughs> I'll be right there. Well, they're listening to the post game <laughs> yeah. show, so yeah. guess what they're starting to do yeah. right now. <laughs> I think that- and they wait till they hear Mike Ross saying last minute of play. Like, All right, now oh, yeah. <laughs> they're coming. Doesn't, doesn't Bonesy phone you back with traffic reports? Uh, he takes transit sometimes. Oh, either that or uh, he's got his own helicopter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that one alone. Yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <Wes. laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, Ralphie. Uh, so you know, Josh, all these scenarios we're talking about, yeah, uh, basically suggest that uh, the lease would go down in the series to start the playoffs, and then the adjustments would happen. Yeah, theoretically, like the way we're kind of outlining it, yeah, is that you know, yeah, like Joe Wall would come in, whatever game three, four, something like that. Nick Robertson comes in, game two, three, something like that. And w- w- we're saying that because they already, as Ralphie alluded to, they feel like underdogs already. Yeah, right. Then, and, and that's why I think tonight went the way it went. Because you beat Florida on Monday, and doesn't that feel like, in some way, like a game one win, like a like advantage Toronto in a way? It did for two periods. Two very, they did enough to win. Yeah, they did yeah. enough to win. But then you get into tinkering and putting people out to see uh, what they can do in certain situations, and uh, you know the third period wasn't great, but I, I wouldn't blame anybody for that because they they were experimenting. They had the luxury of, of a nice lead to be able to do that, so I, I can't be critical of that. Um, 
you know, I, I want to give some credit to Tampa. I like yeah. Tampa's game yeah. tonight. I mean, you could focus in on, on the goals, but regardless of the goals, they the way they played in the Leafs zone was stunning. Uh, they had position literally every time. Uh, there are sequences where they, they really controlled the puck and didn't get a shot. Uh, well, you know, the, the shots, if you look at shots on goals, you would be misled as to how that game was played. Well, this is a team that's still fighting for it. They're now four points behind Toronto. Yeah. So it's not... So that last Last game could be for could everything. Be a, could be a huge game. Or, or nothing, right. Right. This yeah. is the, the, these weird kind of emotional swings that go into it. And I'm not saying complacency was a factor here at all. But if you're the Leafs, you do feel like, you know, you beat Florida, you're at the top of the mountain, you know, for 48 hours. But if you're Tampa, you, you still have a lot to play for. And I think something has set in a little bit mentally with this Leafs team. Not whereby they don't feel like they have anything to play for. It's not that at all. But how long have they been in third place in the Atlantic? Oh, yeah, but, uh, you know, you want to nail things down. You want to, you know, that's that's like habit forming. I just think that Tampa didn't let them do what they wanted to do tonight. That that would be how I would describe this game. This is going to sound strange, but Tampa is still Tampa until they're not. And I don't know. As, as long as you have Vasilevsky playing the way he does. I watched them play the other night, and they lost to Detroit, but that wasn't because they didn't play well. Yeah. They played really well. They got yeah, yeah, yeah. burned in a couple of situations. But, again, like this is still a, a very good team. You know, yeah. they, they, they have what the Leafs don't, you know, deep playoff runs. Um, and there's just that, 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 that mental fortitude that I think is, is still kind of lacking. Um, it's tricky right now it is we'll come back and hear some post game sound this is leafs game night on tsn 1050 the iheart radio app and the leafs radio network hello people of the gta patio season is around the corner but why wait for packed parks and king street when you can head to canada's favorite paradise cuba for less Book early with Sunwing and kick back in Holguin or Cayo Santa Maria, where the mojitos are always fresh. When you save more, you can do more. Book with your local travel agent or at... Do you love deli meat but are careful about your sodium intake? Try new Schneider's Deli Meat with the delicious taste you've come to expect from Schneider's. Now with 25% less sodium than regular deli meats. They're crafted in Canada using only Schneider's premium cuts of meat, and they're an excellent source of protein. Try all five new deli meats, including smoked black forest ham and herb turkey from Schneider's, trusted by Canadians for over 130 years. Brand power helping you buy better. Did you know that if you're 60 or older, RSV can be serious for you? Help protect yourself with a RexV, Canada's first RSV vaccine. Ask your health care provider about a RexV. Arexv is a vaccine that helps to protect adults 60 years of age and older from lower lung disease caused by respiratory syncytial virus, RSV. 100% protection cannot be guaranteed. Adverse events may occur. Learn more at arexv.ca. Leafs game night live from Scotiabank Arena. Tampa wins by a score of 4-1. to So let's go to the, what could have been a turning point, because the crowd loved it, was the reeves Geno fight. Um, and you were hoping that there would be some sort of build off it. There wasn't, but that was a that was a heavyweight tilt. Yeah, and it's it it sort of defeats the purpose, though, doesn't it? When you know there's no real pushback from the team afterwards. I was hoping that somebody that there would be an, as like an energy line come out and start throwing the body around, but it didn't happen that way. Or the crowd as well, yeah. right? Like yeah. it's not on them, but like crowd wasn't up for it tonight either. You know, it didn't. They didn't get activated um just did not have the desired effect even though it was a it was a one-way tilt it was uh and here's ryan reeves uh, on the difference between the two teams tonight i thought we carried a lot of the play um but then you know you give a good team some great opportunities they're going to cash in and uh, i feel like we sagged a little bit uh, especially in that second and then we were kind of playing catch up um you know, I thought we we dominated the whole first period, and um, you know, like the last couple of games, I think, and, and a couple last week, I think, uh, you know, we got to learn to you know come out hotter in the in the third period. I think that's kind of been lacking a little bit, but uh, yeah, I thought we carried a, a decent chunk of it. But uh, you know, the opportunities we gave them were just uh, you know they're a good team. They're going to bury on those. Right. Right. What what coming, you, out, what you, coming out slow in the third period is that your is that your thought of, of dropping the gloves with Janelle there? 
get the bench going? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really think it was a you know a time to fight, but um, you know he asked me, and uh, you know you look at the situation in the game. I thought you know if we're gonna go draw some draw some energy for the boys and. Um, yeah. Was, uh, Were you surprised? Like, did you guys have any conversations earlier in the game, or no? I mean, I, I thought maybe you would ask me after that first shift, but um, yeah, he, he does his job. Do you like the way your own game has come around here in the past month, six weeks or so? Yeah, I've, I've you know compared to the beginning of the season, it's been night and day. It's um, you know it's how it's how you know what what they've expected out of me uh, the whole season. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that that's clicking. I'm glad that the line's clicking. You know, uh, you know, I'm playing more physical. Um, you know, we've we've had our chances in the, in the offensive zone. You know, Davey scored one last game. Um, yeah, I think you know, I'm happy with it. I'm going to keep building on it, and uh, you know, hopefully bring that same energy into the playoffs. Everyone wants to play in the playoffs, of course. As the forwards get healthy here, do you feel like you're in a battle to to stick in the lineup? Or? How do you feel? How do you view it? Uh, I don't know. That's that's not a question for me. But um, you know, I'm just gonna, gonna do my job, and uh, you know, I, I can only do what I can do, and um, you know, play physical and, and take care of my own end and get chances. But um, that's uh, that's about my pay grade. What, what got you? What got you back to this to that to this level, right after the dip? Oh, man, you know, I think. Uh, you know, that, that month, month and a half that I was out, um, you know, I used that as a mini training camp. I, I worked, I worked hard. Uh, you know, I begged. I worked on uh, everything that I could. Um, you know, I was doing two, three a day sometimes, and um, just trying to get confidence back. You know, confidence is a real thing, and um, you know that's the first time I've probably gone through something like that in my career where I just felt like um, nothing was going right, and uh, I just felt like I had no confidence and. Um, you know, I just use that opportunity to try and build it back, and um, you know, coming off of the break, it felt like it felt like my game started, you know, getting a little bit better, and then uh, just been building on it ever since. Yeah, 80's probably not going to happen, but Austin's kind of moving towards 70. How much is that kind of fueling? I wouldn't count him out yet. Okay. Right. <laughs> How much do you think it's rallying the group, like to see what he's doing? Yeah, I mean it's been it's been unbelievable all year. Um, it's it's fun to watch. You know, you're watching history, you're watching Maple Leaf history. So um, yeah, we rally behind him and uh, hope he keeps going. And uh, definitely hopes he carries it into the postseason. What's the most you've seen in the season before for anyone you've played with? That would be it. This now? Yeah. What, what, what was it before this? Most goals? Yeah. Who had the most goals? Of anybody you've played with? Uh, I'm not a stats guy. I don't know. <laughs> asking the wrong guy. Ryan Reeves post game, um, and you know he alluded to the time he had off, and that's another sort of um, under the radar story by the Maple Leafs is how they've managed situations where people had major time off or needed to do a reset, and Samsonov would certainly lead the way that way. But it's sort of a story that doesn't get a lot of attention. Well, I mean, Ryan Reeves is a veteran, and he's going to look around and he's going to say, "Look at the way young players come into training camp." Um, in immaculate shape, ready to go right away, right? Um, I think we also need to, to understand um, adjusting to Toronto, and I'm not just talking about, you know, the market and the media and everything that comes with it. The, the, the pressures, the expectations, the it, it, it's such a difficult place to adjust to. You can play in big markets, but I don't know, outside of Montreal, like there, there's no other market. There's no other lifestyle that comes with with being a Leaf. And I think we've seen that, not just with Ryan Reeves, with a number of players. How, not necessarily hard, but how long it takes to adjust. It's an adjustment period for sure. And if you ask players when they first, I, I, I remember having multiple conversations with Alex Kerfoot about it. You know, you, 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 someone like him who had played for one team in a, let's just call them a mid-market, Colorado, um, and you come here and you realize that your job is not just under a microscope, uh, it matters to so many people. And that's a lot to, to, to get used to. Some players love it. But look at the, the, the off-season acquisitions. Tyler Bertuzzi, Max Domi, Ryan Reeves, they all took time to acclimatize. Oh, absolutely. They all took time to acclimatize to Toronto. Because I think there's also an understanding that, you know, you can be the GOAT one day, and then, you know, whatever the opposite of a goat is, the, the, the next day. 
And 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 that really really weighs on. You, know, you heard Ryan Reeves talking about confidence. Yeah, it really weighs on players because you can come from Chicago or Boston, but nothing compares to this. And it takes time. Well, it does, and, and you know, you, you you would walk into it as a player not knowing if you're going to like it or not. So that that's an adjustment. Uh, in a family situation, may cause stress. Absolutely. So think about you, if you you're got to deal with that. Think about if you're Ilya Samsonov. What you're going through in December, and you're asking yourself, and this is again why his story is so remarkable. You're asking yourself, boy. Not just, I hope I get my Maple Leafs job back. I hope I get to play in the NHL again. Or do I have to take my young family back to Russia? Ilya Samsonov literally told me during that stretch, he considered retirement. That's how bad things get. That's how much things can swing. Again, Ryan Reeves just talked about it. If your confidence drops in Toronto. And I look, I, I don't think that the Toronto media is as bad as it's kind of made out to be. And, you There's know, the a, popular but there is strength in numbers that way. Sure. Yeah. Fine. But, you know, that, that can work for you when you're playing really well. A lot oh, of people absolutely. are on Ryan Reeves' side right now. Yep. But the point is, is I think a little bit of a grace period. Um, I understand they're professionals. They get paid a lot of money to perform. Um, but I think there's we, we've seen it time and time again how long it takes to acclimatize. And I think that's why, you know, he's playing as well as he is now is because he understands what's required here. Tampa wins it by a score of 4-1. This is Leafs game night on TSN 1050, the iHeartRadio app and the Leafs radio network. Hear the Masters exclusively.